big blue pre-order variants versus which Capcom cab did it better? And is Arcade One Up trying to hide the uh, Best Buy Canadian ad? What's going on? Welcome back to the channel an episode of this week where first off we're celebrating the 4th of July and we're going to talk about everything that's going on in the crazy world of Arcade 1UP and their arcade machines and pre-orders, debacles, a pine. It's all over the place. It's crazy. Glad to see that everybody has taken just a little bit of time out of their American holiday to stop by and hang out with me. We are drinking bourbon, of course. That's a shocker. Uh, still drinking the Four Roses uh, single barrel. Uh, a freshly chilled bullet glass. This is what I'm drinking. Hope everybody's enjoying. If you're in the States, enjoying your weekend. Uh, still have one more day off. So if you partake of a drink tonight, you should be good to go for tomorrow. I hope. Or maybe you're actually going to go in and get a little some of that sweet overtime. A lot of things to talk about tonight, even though we just had a live stream on Thursday. Uh, some clarifications, really. Not just from RK1UP, but also for me, it looks like I may have actually missed something in my Super Pac-Man Countercade review. So we're going to talk about that. Actually, we're going to do that live. Uh, I had a specific question that I thought that needed to go ahead and be addressed. So we're going to handle that. As long as very... Confi got to have, have notes, kids. Got to have notes to talk about some of these variants. So initially, when Arcade 1UP said, hey, we're going to have... you know, They did their E3 announcement. These four cabs are coming out. You're going to be able to pre-order them. Everybody was overjoyed. Yay, what's going to happen? What's up with the price? Who knows? Who cares? These cabs are great. And then we you know, we saw the day before, they were talking about, hey, just come over, swing by the uh, the RK 1UP website, and you can just reserve these, no problem. Everybody was excited. And then everybody started seeing prices and freaking out, losing their mind. But a lot of people, including myself, jumped on that reserve immediately, very quickly, thinking that was going to be the only place that you could get your Big Blue Cab or Turtles in Time Cab. Hours later, that turned out not to be the case. Looks like um, the, there was like a staggered release. So you could go to the RK1 website first. Then it was about 12 hours later. I was actually streaming that night, about 10 o'clock or 9 to 10. And uh, you could go to Best Buy. You could find them in, in other places. And so, of course, that you sort of think, okay, well, what's going on? The first thing we look at is price. So if you jump into your arcade one up, uh, order process, the pre-order process, which really wasn't bad for the most part. It was, it was, uh, it was pretty good. You got plenty of notice. It, you had to pay a hundred dollars reserve, and uh, but then you start looking at the receipt, as most of us do after our impulse buy, and you look at the receipt after, <laughs> which is which is stupid, but we do that, and you start flipping through, and you're like, hey, wait a minute, what's seventy five dollars? Wait, shipping? What? What is this? And then when the Best Buy and GameStop, you know, pre-orders go up, uh, there is no, there is no shipping there. You're thinking, oh, wow, am I stupid that I just get screwed? And there you don't have to do a hundred down, $100 deposit. So, okay, well, what's going on? So let me just jump over and, and just let me cancel this order real quick. You're doing this your crazy shuffle. I want to jump over here and, and get a pre-order over here and save 75 bucks. But then you start thinking, there's a panic. Wait a minute, did I just get a different variant? Which happens from time to time. Sometimes uh, if you pay a premium over here, you get this. If you pay a lesser price over here, you don't get some of the goodies over here. What's going on? Is it different games list? Uh, what's, you know, stools, no stools, risers, no risers. Your life is a living hell. It's crazy. So let's dive into that just a little bit. But before we start getting to some of those variants, I want to say hi to the chat. We got some people jumping in already. And uh, first off is Arch Demi Dragon. Happy Americans Day. America's Day? It is America's Day. It's the, the day that we celebrate, that we uh, decided, you know what, Britain? Uh, nah, we're good. I think we want to do our own thing over here. So it uh, it was our independence. Yes, the uh, the Continental Congress voted on it two days uh, before, July 2nd. And then everyone from the 13 colleagues voted in favor of. So boom, 4th of July. There you go. 1776. America. America was born. Thumbs up from the big 1973. Thumbs up here and a wave. All right. Nice. Uh, yes. Panic. Flip gaming. Bourbon. For the win. That's right. That's right. Bourbon for the win. Uh, bourbon for the win. So much to be grateful for and thankful for. Uh, bourbon's one of them. <laughs> bourbon's one of them. We went over your wave. Big 1973. Thank you very much. Yo. Yo to you. Thanks for stopping by. Good to see you. Uh, Zero Hero. Happy Traders Day. Every what? What? Traders as in trading or 
or a traitor, which is spelled differently. So if you're talking about just traitors, like we're going to trade with you, well, then that's fine. But if you're implying something else, how dare you? How dare you? That's probably autocorrect. It's probably the American autocorrect. Like, nope, he doesn't mean traitor. He means traitor. Trade. We're going to trade things, and we're going to hold hands and sing Kumbaya. Super Leaf 64, if the cocktail table was raised a little higher and came a 24-inch monitor, I would honestly, uh, it would honestly be the, I think it's, I would honestly be, it would honestly be the best choice because nobody is crowded in uh, in one small area. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into all that very shortly, but uh, it's a very good point. Jeff says hi, and I say, how you doing? How do you? Brad O'Connell, happy fourth. Happy fourth to you. Uh, Tony C., anyone watch America the movie on Netflix yet? Horribly inaccurate, but so funny and, and adultish. I have not seen it, but I will check it out. Anything that uh, is called America has to be watched, right? By all Americans. It's just, it's required viewing for sure. Um, why isn't the little K turned on? Come on, complete the scene. Uh, well, because, uh, to be honest with you, this is my work in progress. This is my. This is my Raiden 2 project, and uh, we're, we're, we're going through some issues together, this, this, this project and I. Um, we're not going to split up because we care about each other. We love each other. We're committed in this relationship. But, uh, but give me some fits. Uh, can't get the, the Raiden. So I'm using a, a PlayStation Classic in there, and it works with the standard PlayStation PS1. Works great. I'm trying to get uh, the screen stretched out so it fills up the whole screen. So I'm working on that working on that but it's there i want to keep it in the shot because my super pac-man is over here on camera two which we're going to go over uh later on in the show because there's an important thing that i omitted in my review that i want to just kind of go through everybody we're going to do it live you can check it out and uh if you've got any other questions you can let me know for sure uh in downtown mobile alabama awaiting fireworks we had our fireworks last night uh uh pretty big show it's awesome. Everybody gathers around, and uh, of course, you know it's. I'm, I'm I'm on the Kentucky side of the river near Cincinnati, and fireworks are always going off anyway. So just another day. The big blue better have scan line options for the yeah for for the ridiculous price. Of, I, you're damn right. You're absolutely right. And uh, you know, and with that, why don't we go ahead and just jump into that? Let's go into some of the uh, some of the. There was a little bit of confusion. So, like I said before, you you know you. You freaked out. You were the first, your first one in line at the uh, RK1 website, and you reserved. You hit that reserve, and you put your, you put your money down. You, you signed up for the partially, uh, you know, service, which was another thing I had to sign up for, which was a little bit annoying, but it wasn't, it wasn't terrible. The one benefit was you could do a little bit of financing, but most of us kind of have our. That's already kind of lined up for us, so we didn't need another thing to sign up for. But whatever. And at the time, I thought that it was the only way to go. Well, turns out it's not the only way to go. So. Let's start with let's start with you know home base right arcade one up. If you got your that variant there, if you did uh, if you did your reserve now, what were you going to get? So this was actually the agreement. This was part of the this is the thing that if you clicked on and you went to pay your hundred dollars, this was the agreement. This is what you were agreeing to, and this is uh, this is really just cut free for anybody that wants to look at it. Um, but it says by placing a hundred dollar deposit now, you are reserving your Street Fighter Two Big Blue Arcade Machine Bundle, and this is what actually it is going to be included in this. And this is, this is pretty uh, specific actually, because this may be the only place I see this listed. Uh, riser, obviously light up marquee, obviously light up deck protector. That's going to be the thing to look out for light up deck, deck protector and exclusive stool. Okay. Then have some, and then it gets into more jargon. Estimated ship date is mid September. Uh, and then installment payments and all that and blah, blah, blah. So, so once again, that, that light up deck protector, which is something that's, Usually reserved for top tier models, NBA Jam, uh, like the five hundred dollar version. You, you could get a Best Buy. The uh, the Marvel vs. Capcom five hundred dollar variant is uh, is going to have that lit up deck protector. There was a five hundred dollar version of the uh, the Pac Man fortieth that also had that lit up deck protector. And there's been a few other models out there. I think uh, there may have been like a like a t I can't remember, but there were there were just very very few uh, other cabinets that had that lit up deck protector, and that was kind of a premium deal. So that was what you were going to get for your money if you you know got it from Arcade One Up. So then you know, like anybody else, seeing a hundred dollars that could be saved roughly, I jumped over and I actually canceled mine after I locked one down at GameStop, who claimed they could get it to me by mid August. We know that may change, 
Uh, but I just sort of did it, not thinking it through because I thought, well, you know, if it doesn't include a stool, I'm fine. Uh, but I got to digging in to see what that variant was. So we see what we're going to get if we did the reservation with RK one up mid September and all the stuff we just listed. The lit up deck protector is going to be the the thing to watch out for. The thing to watch out for. So let's uh, let's take a look at some other things. So we know the other variants are going to be GameStop and going to be uh, Best Buy. So let's jump over to. Let's jump over to Best Buy real quick. There we go. Okay. So if you went to Best Buy, same price, $5.99, but free shipping. That's a big, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. 75 bucks is what you were going to pay from um from Market One Up. And then obviously your taxes were going to be sort of whatever you want, you know, whatever, depending on where you are in your area. Someone in the comment section told me they live in New York and they paid right at seven hundred dollars is what they're going to pay to get this thing to their house. $700. That's steep. That's really steep. But here it is, $5.99, uh, 50 bucks a month if you go through their little financing or whatever. If we scroll down here, now it's we need to start. This is where we got to kind of get a little particular. So the description is the la 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 fluff. Here's what it is. Here is the 12 games. Okay, so included are the games. And this really doesn't, it's not all 12. I don't know why that's <laughs> it's cut off like that. Here's some of the specifics, but you really want to get down, click on this specific tab at Best Buy right here. And this actually gives you, it really breaks it down for you exactly what's going to be included. So number USB ports, zero. I don't know why that, I don't know why that's there. Probably some generic field that they have. Okay, so um, you're going to have a stool. So right there, it calls out the additional accessories. Right there is stool. So right there, right off the back, because that's always the one that's kind of easy to miss is, uh, is does it come with the stool or not? Because it's not always in the picture. But you're going to get the stool. Um, and then as you scroll down, you're not going to see within that description, you got reviews, which nobody has a review of this thing yet. Uh, your games included, which we, we know those 12. We're going to go over that a little bit later also. As we get into some of the verses, which one should you get? Which Capcom cab did it better? Uh, but no mention whatsoever of a lit marquee anywhere. I'm sorry, not a lit marquee, a lit up a deck protector. So um, doesn't really call that out with any sort of specificity. So something to be aware of. Safe to assume you're not going to get that, but you are going to get the soul. So which is kind of the other big ticket item? Do you have to have a lit deck protector? I don't know. That's kind of up to you. That's up to you. So then the next variant or the next place you could actually uh, get one of these that could possibly have a variant would be GameStop. So let's go over to GameStop. Let me share my screen. Where are you? There you are, you beautiful thing. Click over here. Okay, this is where I currently have my, I'm not endorsing anybody. Uh, you know, I'm not getting anything, any kind of kickback from GameStop or anything like that. I just went with GameStop because they're promising this release date of 818, which we know may slip. But if that slips to the first week of September, and everybody that ordered their stuff from RK One Up Direct is getting theirs in mid September. I'm still going to get mine first. Also, one thing to be aware of that I didn't mention just now is that if you order through, um, and let me just click over. I know you can't see this, but I'm clicking over real quick just to make sure. Yeah, that release date is still set for uh, October 3rd. So go with Best Buy, but you're going to get that later than anybody else. So here's a pre order. You can scroll through. You see all the pictures. The thing to look for, obviously, is you know there's no pictures of a lit uh, deck protector, which I don't even know that there's a picture of a lit deck protector on the RK One Up website. Um, but there's not one here. There's also not a picture of a stool. Uh oh, what happens? So you look through here, you start reading, and you don't see any mention of a stool. Uh, whoops! Until you get to about this third, fourth paragraph down here. So. Uh, now let's talk eye appeal. A gorgeous cabinet design. Magic, no, this is a lit up deck protector. What? Uh, giving off a vibrant glowing effect. A matching riser that provides both height and presence. A huge light up marquee that will be the focal point of any game room. And a matching stool. So there is your matching stool. There again, you see the light up deck protector. Um, so we didn't see that called out specifically. And you scroll down here. Um, this is going to give you some other details, but nothing, nothing that really. It says, see here. It says clear deck protector. It doesn't say lit up deck protector. So you know, it's we may be kind of splitting hairs here, but it's it's important to to look at all this to kind of get an idea of what it is you're you're spending all that money for. But 
so so what does this mean? Um, what I think that this could mean is this. It could mean that your lit up deck protector is going to be standard with this cab. It doesn't matter who you get it from. There's not a variant to speak of. The only thing that I see that's different is that listing from Best Buy, and it just doesn't call it out. It just doesn't call out specifically the lit up deck protector for the big blue. Um, so what does that mean? Does that mean if you go with Best Buy for the same price, you're going to get it in October later than everybody else, and you're not going to get a lit up deck protector? Uh, somehow I doubt that. Somehow I doubt that. I think it's probably just an oversight with Best Buy, which happens from time to time. Uh, it definitely does. Faux show. So I don't think it's anything to get uh, to get too wigged out about. But it's important to know and to pay attention to when you swap your pre-orders. When you go with somebody uh, with your pre-order versus this company or that company, it's important to read that fine print because it's possible that we could have had a variant in there slip in. And it still may be. Listen, I may get mine from GameStop and it may just have a clear deck protector. That's it. No lit. No, it's not no lit. No light. It's not lit. You know what I'm saying? Um, or it could be that these cabinets being $600, they're not going to, they're not going to skimp on anything, which at $600, I don't think that you should, you should. And in a minute here, we're going to go over the very, the specifics about what makes this cabinet worth $600, or is it even possible that it gets there? Um, I don't know. You're going to have to be the judge of that for sure. But anyway, so pay attention to that. Look out for that. Be on the lookout for that because this isn't, this is not the only cab that is going to obviously drop. So we've already got the turtles in time, which we're going to discuss that in a minute. There could be a huge variant going on there. Who knows? And then obviously in two weeks or a week and a half now, what's the, what is uh, today's? Um, so we got, was the 15th. So we got 11 days until our next big pre-order event. Um, so we got to, we got to, we got to be ready for that X-Men. And I think a lot of people are second. They're given, they're given their X-Men pre-order uh, a second thought. Because it's not, you can't just, I don't know if you can just buy these things because they look cool anymore at $600 or $650, which listen, if Turtles in Time is going to be $650, I think it's safe to assume that X-Men is going to be $650. So you, if you buy two of these things, you're looking at $1,200 US. That's, that's a good chunk of change, guys. That's a good chunk of change. So anyway, when it comes to $600, $400, $200, make sure you understand what you are buying and you're getting for your money, because every dollar is hard earned, I would imagine. Um, and you don't want to waste it. You don't want to waste it for sure. Let's jump back to the chat and see what's going on. I know I went a little bit of a ramble there, but it's important. Details really matter because we're way beyond, we're way beyond $400 days, kids. We are way beyond $399 cabs. Unless you want to, unless you're totally happy with your legacy um, and going that route, man, the to get these things, to get the premium, uh, you're no longer paying $3.99 for sure. Uh, Brad says Walmart will end up having it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, no, Brad. No, 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 no. Do not come in here breaking our hearts <laughs> or interjecting any kind of science, math, or logic. We can't have that. But yeah, Walmart will end up having it first with no fanfare. They had Atari Legacy when GameStop uh, had me in infinite limbo. Uh, Big Blues will be everywhere if they are good. Mm. True, they're not there yet, but Walmart kind of Walmart does their own thing, and they can do whatever they want to. As big as they are, uh, they don't really have to worry about it whatsoever. BCJ, what's up? Uh, did you see the prices went up? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, depending on where you're shopping, I've actually seen, I've actually seen the the Atari uh, Legacy Edition, the Tempest. Um, I've seen that as, as high as uh, five hundred dollars. No, I'm sorry, four hundred and fifty dollars. That's a three ninety nine cab all day long, guys. Don't 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 spend that. I've actually seen it as high. I'm sorry, I meant to say actually as high as five hundred. Uh, but don't you know? Don't spend more than that. Be patient. Those prices will come down. But yes, the four fifty you're talking about. Yeah, I've seen that and I've seen five hundred. So it's crazy. Um, hey, I, you said I wonder why is why is it because the big blue coming out soon? Rarity. Probably, maybe with these with higher prices, they think they can justify it. But the place that I saw that wasn't at a, a big, big retailer. It was at the uh, the RC Wiley, and they tend to try to ask more for their stuff. So just be once again, be cautious of where you're looking, where you're shopping. If you're serious about it, um, give it some time because those legacy cabs are supposed to be around. They're supposed to be the evergreen cabs, so they're going to be out there for a while. That could just be supply catching up with demand. Once that settles, 
Uh, I think it's a great time to start shopping. Um, and if you get, like I said, if you can be patient, wait for the fall time. And I think you're going to get that. Like I said, the supply chain is going to ramp up. Price is going to start coming down and you're going to be able to get those cabs for a steal. I really do. I really think you're going to see sales for those. I think, I think that could potentially, depending on where you shop, Walmart comes to mind. You could find that for $300. I think, I think you're going to find, uh, find those all over the place for sure. Um, I wish I would have jumped on Namco legacy when they hit 350. Yeah. See, I, I got one. I haven't put it together yet because uh, I'm reorganizing over in the arcade area. But yeah, I got mine. Uh, I had to jump on that. I've, you know, I've wanted a, I've wanted a, a big, uh, a full size, you know, Pac-Man cab for a while, but uh, just uh, just didn't never got around to it. So I'm glad I jumped on that. Three fifty was a great price for that. Great price for sure. Got a celebrity in the house. P Dubs Arcade Loft. What's up? Does this uh, does this come with two games or twelve games? Got to be careful. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. Two, six. Uh, does it matter if I'm in Canada or in America? What's going on? Is it? Is it? I mean, is it the fourth? Is it our independence? Is that? Is that what made you take four games away from us? <laughs> is that what's going on? Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. Stick Kenobi, what's up, brother? Uh, hi there, Fox. Hope you're well. I am well. I hope you're well as well. Well as well. Well, sure. Bunch of wells going on. Bunch of wells going on. Wells everywhere. Um, happy fourth P Dubs. Yes, indeed. Uh, the big 1973 uh, home consoles killed the arcade 30 plus years ago. 30 years later, it's happening again. These are way too expensive when their PS5s and Xbox are cheaper. And that, I think that that's a valid point, big 1973, because when you're looking at, you know, a $600 console, $500 console, you know, we're talking about PS5s, digital versions, um, comparing to a $400 cabinet, you can kind of sort of justify it. But when it's as much or more than a PS5 and wait till, like I said, supply chains or, you know, the, so, um, the manufacturer is going to ramp back up and it's going to meet that demand because right now you can't even find a PS4 in a Walmart in my area, let alone a PS5. Once it's all readily available and now I can actually buy a PS5, why would I buy a cab? When I can finally get my hands on a PS5 that I've been waiting for. And I think a lot of people are going to say that. A lot of people are going to say that. Uh, Brad is legit. Brad is too legit. Too legit to quit. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hammer, don't hurt him. Come on. The stock uh, trackball on the uh, Atari Legacy isn't all that bad. Uh, the biggest issue with the cab is the incorrect screen orientation. Yeah, that's you really got to be careful when you're, when you're trying to have a, a variety of games, vertical and horizontal. Uh, you know, you can't, uh, unless you're, well, unless you get, uh, unless you get the, what was it? The, the at games legends mini where you can actually rotate the screen. Somebody was thinking my brother drunk three PO, nothing but love for my brother Fox, nothing but love for you, man. Happy fourth salute. Happy fourth indeed, man. I hope you're doing really well, brother. Hope you're doing really well. A bit vinyl. Happy fourth. Happy fourth. Let freedom ring. Let the may the prices of arcade one ups fall like rain. <laughs> I just I don't know. It'd be nice if it were cheaper though, wouldn't it? Just a little bit cheaper. Uh, you can MG says you're gonna stack them, Mister Steven, and make a big not so blue. What? <laughs> you're gonna have to comment again and explain that one because my small brain couldn't comprehend. Um. The only thing that will save RK one from more harsh and upset comments, which we're going to get to in just a little bit, uh, from customers is that they nail the Wi-Fi playabilities with these small blue and add scan lines. Y'all are y'all are killing them on the big blue. It's not a big blue. It's small blue. It's a skinny blue. It's a it's a slender. It's a slender blue. You know, it's tall, but you know, it's it's thin. You know, it's like a basketball player. You know, just uh, not quite uh, not quite there. Salute to you. And, uh, and and on that note, let's go into before we get into the verses. I did want to touch on just a little bit. Let me let me just pull this up. Give me just one second. Uh, I had to. Whew. So you're talking about you're talking about comments, harsh comments, uh, mean spirited. Uh, where I had these pulled up earlier, and it was just this is now the <laughs> this is the one that always gets. Let me go ahead and share this real quick. So we can sort of laugh, I guess, or cry. I don't know. I mean, you talk about how sad is it that they kind of screwed this so bad, so incredibly bad. Uh, look at some. Look at some of these comments. I mean, it's not good. Uh, trying to figure out why you tweeted a pixelated donut just before E3. 
uh, that was a Simpsons reference, Chad. Uh, Simpsons Arcade was announced a couple weeks back. That's he was responding to that uh, about Killer Instinct. Everybody's worried about Killer Instinct. I love TMNT, but this price point is not for me and only two games. Hashtag pass. It's not good, kids. Not good. I thought we were done with only putting a few games on a cabinet. Here we go again. They're, they're talking about this regression. All other cabs lately have been much better with 12 or so included. That's a good point. I mean, when you talk about your legacy uh, with your 12, you're, we think your premiums are going to have uh, about six games, right? That's kind of where we should be. When Big Blue comes out with 12 and you got TMNT sitting next to it with two, it's just not right. It's just not right. Uh, how much? How much is it? Uh, nowhere could I find on the page. And when you check... And you check out at once a down payment of seventy five bucks. I'm imagine I, I only imagine he's talking about the reserve, but the reserve actually where well, they were trying to hit me for a hundred dollars. So if it's seventy five, it's actually a little bit better deal. There's a hidden arrow in the lower center of the checkout. Oh yeah, it's, it's telling you. Yeah, he's telling him where the price is. Six hundred plus for two games. <laughs> Screw off, arcade one up. This thing will be in bargain bins by the end of the year. Maybe, maybe. Any idea? And this is my my poor UK. Uh, subscribers still wanting to know when this is going to hit them. When, when are they, when are they going to make our, make it to the shores of the UK? Is this really six and one like Canada? Yes. The, here you go. Confusion, confusion. Once again, six fifty. Have you guys officially lost it? Joel, I don't know. Uh, but it could be, wow. The artwork on the cabinet is terrible. <laughs> it's accurate, but it is terrible. Yeah. You have this comment down here. It's the original artwork. Uh, I need to sign up for the partially thing to reserve pre-order question mark yes you do yeah that's you got to sign up for that service so that you can do a pre-order through them or hopefully this person has done a little looking online and they've seen that uh, you can go other places so yeah not a good re and then listen that's 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 actually tame those comments are tame go over to their facebook page people are getting pissed off people are saying shove it up your you know where they're they're not happy they're not happy at all and uh, it's like i said it's it's the it's the most angry i think i've seen their comment section, usually their comment sections on their social media is like, hey, where's this cab? Hey, where's that cab? This is okay, but you know, normally it's like, oh, another Pac-Man cab, ha, ha, ha. It, it's sort of tame, but it's getting, it's getting, the rhetoric, the heat's getting elevated. Let me just say that, okay? People aren't really happy. Some people are feeling slighted by Arcade 1-Up, and it's, and it's a shame. It's a damn shame, because I think you had a lot of people hooked and, and along for the ride, and it's just not, uh, mm, it's not going so well. It's not going so well, indeed. So let's jump over to the verses, okay? The verses. Who did it better? So there, there's a couple things we're going to look at. Basically, I'm going to look at well, which Capcom, you know, cab did it better that RK went up did within the last couple of years. It's actually weird when you think about it. Uh, how many variants they've had? Uh, multi cabs. Uh, it's not. And when you look at it this way, it's not just Pac Man. It's not just Pac Man. They've done this with Street Fighter also. So here you go. So a quick note on this graphic. The games list, and I don't know if everyone really knows this. The games list for your leg your Capcom Legacy Cab and your Cocktail Cab, which are both available. You can you can you can go to their website right now and you can you can find uh, I don't know if they sell direct or or you got to go to one of the uh, one of their partners, but you can get this cocktail cab now. They both have the exact same games list. It's funny because when you go to the website, the way they have it listed, um, it, it's it's out of the games are out of order. So you, it, it, just a quick glance, you think that maybe it's a different games list. No, it is the exact same games list for the Legacy and the Head to Head Cocktail Cab. So that being said, you got your games list on the left for Big Blue or Tall Blue, the thin, thin, tall. Big and tall, skinny and tall. <laughs> so you got the, the blue guy here uh, coming out, and here's the games list here, and then you have this variant here. Now, it's important to note that the games that I have highlighted here, you've only got three that cross over. So you sometimes you got a, a Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo and Street Fighter 2 Turbo. They sometimes get confused, but no, there is there is a difference. So there's only three game three games that cross over. So if you have both cabs, you're only going to have that that much crossover. Everything else is there now. It's if you are a Street Fighter Two fan and you want every variant of Street Fighter Two, you're probably going to be more inclined to go with your Legacy, which is you're right now three ninety nine, or uh, the, the sit down cocktail cab. 
But let's say you like Street Fighter 2, but you don't need six Street Fighter 2 games. Actually, five Street Fighter games, but <sighs> Street Fighter 1, I mean, come on, let's be honest. Let's 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 be honest. Street Fighter 1, nobody likes Street Fighter 1. Street Fighter Fun is being famous for the game that came before Street Fighter 2. That's what it's famous for. You know, it's like, uh, what's the city in the middle of the country that's close to everything else? That's what it's famous for. It's what's well, close to everything. I think Dayton, Ohio is famous for being like an hour's drive to a lot of other places. Doesn't count. So, so yes, you get Street Fighter 1, which, okay, is ar ar arguably not even worth putting on the cab. Yeah, it's not not really, but, but whatever. Then you're going to have five Street Fighter 2 games. And then you're going to get into, you know, once again, we're over here on the right side. You're going to get one Darkstalkers. You're going to get Strider, Commando, Final Fight, uh, Ghosts and Goblins, and you're going to get 1944, which is, that's a pretty good game list. That's actually not bad. Um, but you're going to have to pick your form factor. Pick your form factor. Do you want to have a stand-up cab or do you want to have the sit-down cab? It's going to be up to you. Both of them have their issues. I think the only issue with uh, with the cocktail cab, besides the fact that it's a small screen, is that you're going to probably have to put some legs on these. Now, I'm going to have a video coming out, uh, oh, maybe next week. Uh, I'm still working on that. I'm going to replace the stock legs with with elevated legs, and it's it's not super simple, but it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. And you can easily raise that to get that in a more adjustable height. Of course, now the screen size you're kind of stuck with, uh, it, that, that kind of is what it is. But if you can live with that monitor size, uh, maybe elevate that, you're going to be, you're going to be in good shape if you like that form factor. Now, if you like the stand-up cab, we, you know, my, my, my disdain for the legacy stand-up cabs is well documented. There's two major flaws with this. One is that control panel, which I've shown you on my channel how to rebuild that yourself. You can build a completely new uh, MDF, you know, deck, the board itself, and then just take all your controls, put it in there, boom, you're ready to go. And then you got the height to contend with. Elevate that in any way you want. You could make a riser for your riser, put legs on this riser, or you can build an elevated platform for all your arcade one-ups, which is something that I may or may not be doing, but so you've got, you've got a couple of issues there. You got to fight with, but beyond that, it's a pretty good list in comparison to the big blue where you only have three street fighter twos. And for the most part, they're, they're pretty varied. Um, I think I would have liked to have the original street fighter two, the world warrior on there and then have two other variants, but that's fine. That's not, that's really not bad. Super puzzle fighter two is, is really, that's a really fun, pick up and play a game uh, similar to Tetris. It's got a lot of broad appeal. A lot of different people like that. Uh, male, female, my wife likes that. You know, that's, that's a fun game to play the entire dark stalkers collection. So you have dark stalkers one, obviously, which is a, a crossover game with the other calves, but then you have two and three. So, you know, I mean, if you're, if you like that, if you like having that entire collection on one cab, it's nice to have that there. I probably would have rather just had dark stalkers three on here. Just to have the third one. Uh, I'm not, I like, I like the series, but I think three is kind of the, you know, the best one of the, of the, of the bunch. So I think I would have rather had maybe, maybe take one of the dark stalkers off, maybe have one and three, or maybe just have three and then maybe come over here and grab final fight or commando or something else. Maybe, uh, but anyway, so that's what that is. So you get all three of those. Now we're going to get, uh, into some deep cuts, I guess. So you got Saturday night slam masters wrestling game. Uh, it's not like WWE, so it's not officially, it's not, you're not going to have like Hulk Hogan or anything like that, but it is a wrestling game. It's pretty fun. Knights of the round is a great, uh, side scrolling beat em up. It's pretty good. You got uh, big character, um, you got large character animations. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good, it's, it's a fun game. It's a really fun game. Eco fighters is like a side scrolling shooter. Whereas, you know, 1944 is more of the top down. So that's, that's a pretty good game. Uh, I, I enjoy it. I think I like the 1944 or the 19. 1900 series better 1940 series uh i think i like those a little bit better than eco fighter but that's fine uh capcom sports club is a is a good that's a good variety there's a lot of there's probably more variety within this cab because you don't have six street fighter twos so the sports club is definitely something to break up the monotony of everything else and then muscle bomber duo is kind of like a pseudo successor to uh saturday night slam masters in my opinion based on what i've seen so uh now you've seen the games list. You've seen the crossover. There's really just three games of crossover. Is it worth it? Is it worth it to you? And that's what you got to ask yourself. And that's that. That's only a question for you. Nobody can answer that for you. Um, you're going to get a stool, which you're not going to get with your legacy. 
So, I mean, really, is is that worth the extra money? Um, I don't know. The lit game, the lit up uh, game protect deck protector, which maybe everybody's going to have. Not sure. Pretty sure we're going to have that. So your lit your lit deck protector is going to be there. Um, is that going to be worth paying that much money? I don't know. It's going to be up to you to decide. It is a new form factor. It's going to be interesting to see how that angled, uh, you know, control deck works out, which could be kind of fun. Don't know. Don't really know. But uh, I'm curious enough to where I'm going to keep my pre-order. I'm going to I'm going to keep it. I think it looks. Uh, I think it's uh, the cab's kind of ugly. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's ugly. I, I'm not. I'm not a big fan of it. But I'm not completely turned off by it. I like. I like the fact they're doing something a little bit different. I like the fact that the speakers face you, kind of like your eye arcades. Um, because I think you can just take that panel out and then just, you know, cut out a circle and easily inset a badass speaker. And I'll go ahead and have that grill facing you. And then maybe uh, the aftermarket can bring us some, you know, big blue Capcom, uh, you know, speaker covers. And then maybe you can sort of mimic that uh, the Q sound that was so big with those cabs, too. Um, I'm curious to see if those speakers are any larger than the, the little, you know, the three inch speakers that we have now. Be interesting to see if maybe we get like a nice four inch or maybe I, I don't know. Crazy thought here, maybe like a like a you know six inch, you know six and a half, big speaker, uh, give us a little more bass. I I have no idea. I think they would probably have to up the uh, they'd have to have like maybe an inline amp or something to really kind of pump out the uh, the the amount of uh, you know power you'd have to have to drive those speakers. But that would be interesting. So I'm interested because of the form factor, because it's different, and because it is going to stand out in your arcade. If you've got a bunch of arcade one ups. You know they. I like. I like the size. The the style of these old uh, cat old. These the, these first generation through third generation that that curved sides. I, I I like that, but it can be a little not monochromatic. But you know what I'm saying, like super uniform. Which if you're OCD, that works out great. But it's kind of nice to have some variety because the arcades were like that. They were. You know, back in the day, they were publishers were trying to make different cabs, stuff that would stand out, look different, and uh, and you know, kind of get your attention. That big marquee is going to be one of them for sure. So that's just something that's just something to consider. So, but there you go. I, I think that's probably everything you need to know. Games list side by side. Make your choice. Do you want to just spend four hundred and pick up a Capcom Legacy? You can pick those up at Target now. Uh, as of just just recently, they uh, I think it was probably a few days ago. I posted that on my YouTube communities uh, tab, or you can find that at Target. Um, I think they're still available there for three ninety nine, and it's online. You don't have to go pick it up in store. So you can have that sent to the house. Three ninety nine is not bad. Three ninety nine gives you a little bit of cash to do the other mods um, to, to fix that the, the deck, which you, you just you have to the control deck. You got to fix that and pick it up a little bit, raise it up. You know, built a, get a spacer uh, from from another company, build something yourself, and then you're up and running. And then you've got you've got a pretty good games list. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna knock it. Now I already have a Black Series cocktail, the head to head uh, Street Fighter cab. So do I need a Legacy cab? No, I mean uh, unless I just had to play those games in the stand up orientation, I'm good. I've already got I've got I've got those games. I'm good. I'm covered, and I got that different form factor. So. For me, for my arcade, this works for me. Is it going to work for you? Like I said, you are the only one that can answer that question. Fosho. Fosho. I need to scroll up here because I think that I may have actually skipped a super chat. I did. What a moron I am. Gee, and it's from P-Dubs. Nonetheless, what is wrong with me? Instead of light up deck, add another game. That's a hell of an idea, isn't it? Why couldn't they take uh, Final Fight and throw it on here? You know, a game that they already have in their library. Why not? Just throw that in there. Why does it have to be 12? Why can't it be 13? Lucky 13. You know, why can't it be 16? If you're looking at that grid that they have on there, instead of three rows of four, how about four rows of four? Uh, you know, P-Dub with the, with, the, with the simple, you know, solution, with the, with the common sense uh, question there. And because he's, uh, he is the man, I'm going to hit him with a little bit of, let's hit him with some cinder. Absolutely. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for supporting the channel. Nice to have you in the chat. 
As always, brother. As always. All right, let me try to get caught back up here. I know I, I have skipped through several people. Did uh, the only thing that? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I read that. Trying to get caught up. Stig uh, would be cool if they just let the customers buy a cabinet and just have them uh, pick twenty games to put on it. That would be great, wouldn't it? Um, that would be really great. That would be nice. Just sort of uh, just pick what you want, put it on it. But uh, I think uh, there are other companies that are doing that in a download fashion. But it would not be a bad idea to have maybe a built to order if you had a list of approved roms from capcom let's say and you wanted to make your own capcom cab uh, have, have a custom pcb sent your way that was not a bad idea that'd be interesting uh eight bit says i'll do the mrs pac-man if it drops below 300 um yeah i mean with the pac-man cabs eight eight bit i mean unless you're unless you're just unless you're digging on that that split uh, artwork, which is which is pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's kind of dope. I, I'm not I'm not gonna lie, I like it. Um, but unless you just you got to have that, go with it. Go with the Namco uh, Legacy. I mean, uh, and now it doesn't. Uh, the Namco Legacy does not have the uh, the Miss Pac Man, but you can you can pick up one of those mixed Miss Pac Mans out there now uh, for cheap. Keep your eyes peeled. Actually, Walmart may be your best bet for that. Uh, keep your eye on uh, Walmart for sure. Oh, I'm so really hoping Killer Instinct. Listen, I. They talked about it, didn't they? They talked about it. This is not this is not us. This is not, you know, people just making it up. They they announced it in January. We're dying to know. I I really hope it's still coming. Brad O'Connell, man, you're just you're singing my song. What are you doing here? Uh it should have uh alphas and third strike. It's time to make that step. Now Alpha was still 2D, but that was that was like the the Marvel versus Capcom art style. That was that was kind of that transitioning into that next level i'm telling you and when, when it comes to like street fighter 3 i think is a little underappreciated street fighter 3 third strike it, it was a true successor it uh it it wasn't sort of a gradual it was a it was a real there was a real difference there and it really felt like um what was the um it was a uh, capcom versus snk that was that same sort of style the art style the uh the announcer guy everything so that was really, and, and I, I'm going to be honest with you. I wouldn't mind a Street Fighter EX series. That I've talked about this forever. I've talked, well, not forever, but I've talked about this for a while. It's time to transition to that third, that 3D realm, those those first, that first wave of 3D games, like the Virtual Fighter, like those first Tekkens, you know, all that stuff. It's time to transition to that because even though it's not going to hold up to current, those current iterations of those games within that same franchise, it's still going to be something that, that it's got that nostalgia. I've got that nostalgia. I remember with a, my buddy of mine um, in the army, he had a Sega Saturn and that was the first time I saw a virtual fighter. And that was just, I mean, it blew your mind back then. And then all those copycats came out like uh, fighting Vipers and uh, battle reader to and the PlayStation stuff, all that was really cool but the stuff but the arcade versions of those games were, were top tier top tier for sure it was really really nice let me, let me scroll back down here golden x is always good they have a four-player golden x uh, cab i don't know if you're aware you're probably not aware because it's hard to find it's really hard to find uh but yeah golden x for sure death adder uh i want to actually I'm, i really want to get my hands that's that's probably the next uh third gen cab i want to find I know where I can get it, but I got to pay like, well, I got like 600. I don't want to, I'm not doing that. I've got, somebody's got, it's got to come back and stop somewhere. GameStop or somebody's got to have that for sure. 8-Bit says, what makes me laugh is I think the track and field, <laughs> track and field camp, ah, uh, got a bad rap. And I bet when it comes out, it will be one of the better Konami cabs. And yes, it will need a button swap. I want to see, I want to, I want to see that. I want to see what you're going to do. What are you going to do with that? Because I really don't know. I really don't. Some they may sometimes. I think they may be biting off a little more than they can chew. The chat just jumped on me. I'm, let me apologize. Let me just scroll back up here because I had this guy come by. If I can just get a Pac-Man table arcade, well, sir, they got him, Mister Fatal J. They got him. They got him available. All you got to do is spend that money. Spend that sweet YouTube money. That your big. 4,000 sub ass can afford. <laughs> Mr. Big Time. Good to see you, man. Thanks for stopping by. Brad, one up. Uh, this is uh, Panic talking to Brad. One up needs to start listening to the, co the consumers rather than Monday morning meeting decisions. I agree. I agree. I think um, there's a lot of things they can do. And, it's, and, and it goes beyond just give me more games. There's many more games to see. Agent Smith. 
When bad addiction? When bad addiction? Uh, where do we draw a fine line of a bad addiction? Um, well, it's, uh, you know, as long as you just tell yourself that you can quit, then you don't have a problem. That's what the, that's what, yeah, that's what the, my counselor told me. Actually, I, I didn't talk to a counselor. I don't talk to anybody about my addictions. I acknowledge that they're addictions, but I just don't acknowledge that they're present. And, and that's how I get through my day. Uh, just a drink in the morning, just, just, just to calm my nerves. It's not a problem. I can quit whenever I want to. Mr. Steven, uh, or buy two and make single player panels uh, for them and hook them up together for a true head to head experience. I, we saw that a lot with racing cabs, didn't we, Mr. Steven? With uh, like Daytona USA, where you could have, they would, Sega would have these cabs sitting next to each other and physically plugged in. I think, I think there's something to that. If you could have cabs with variants, um, it'd be, it'd be a tall order to have somebody buy the same cab twice. But if you had, two cabs with a similar games list. Maybe they shared one game that was connectable. Maybe if there was a couple Sega cabs and Daytona USA just happened to be on both. So you can have a separate, mostly separate games list over here. So two, two cabs, mostly separate games list, but those games that do cross over are interconnected. So you can have Daytona USA playing over here and over here. And that, that's just my example. And there you go. Same thing could happen with a fighting game. The, the, the fighting games. I mean, same thing. You could have your Capcom Legacy and, and the way to, to have people go ahead and buy the Best Buy or the, the Big Blue or the whatever would be that that sort of that this sort of interconnection, you know, thought process. I mean, it, we're really, when you think about it, we're kind of going back in time to like the Game Boy, you know, those link cables that they had where two Game Boys you could play against each other. It's not new technology. It's kind of old technology, but it would be a way to try to have people to try to convince people to buy multiple cabs, really. I mean, let's say not everybody has a uh, a dream of an arcade in their house, but to get people to buy a couple cabs, maybe they really dig this one game, but they want to they want to be able to connect. They would love to connect their two cabs together. I mean that, you know, that's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. I think I think it could actually work. What is going on here, Demajani? Was in Best Buy and their gaming session was empty, and it's sad, Demajani. It is very sad, man. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. It's a it's a sad state of affairs, but I, I hope, I hope that uh, that you know everything, all the, all those uh, manufacturers, those microprocessors and chips and the silicon and all that is getting is ramping back up, and we can expect to see all that stuff back in in our Best Buys and our WalMarts and those electronic sections. Because I'm with you, they're kind of bare and it's kind of sad to walk through and not even be able to look at a big dis you know display model of a PS5 or the new Xbox sitting there and you know, you, I mean, you can't even buy a controller. I, well, I take that back. You, can, I can buy a Dual Sense Five, the PS Five controller. I can buy that, but I can't buy the damn console. Can't even buy a PS Four. It's sad. But you know what's not sad? A little Super Saiyan Two go on. Want to see me turn into a Super Saiyan? Fine, I'll do it. Just remember, you asked for it. <sighs> Appreciate the two dollar super chat, man. Really do. Nineteen K Fox uh, is making wise decisions, or wants versus needs. Uh, um, hmm. To well, uh, listen. If we're talking needs, you don't need anything. You need air to breathe. You need water to drink. You need food in your stomach. That's really it. Um, so none of these are needs, per se. Uh, but what you have to decide is once you have all your bills paid and your commitments met, and you have this whatever it is left over, how much of that are you willing to let go of to purchase one of these items? Whether it's a electronic, whether it's a, you know, with, with guns and cars, I mean, tools, you name it, whatever your thing is, action figures, whatever it is, uh, PlayStation portables, man, I got a lot of those. Uh, it's whatever your deal is, you have to sort of, you have to figure out for yourself what is worth my hard earned money. And, you know, I, I think I think if you're honest with yourself, listen, it's all once. Everything beyond the the very basics are once. Now, what are you gonna spend your money on? What is what's it what's it worth to you? Demajani again says uh, Best Buy did have a Pac-Man cab, and I thought <laughs> that makes me smile, man. 
That makes me smile. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so it's it's uh, it, it's interesting. Uh, it's it's always a good conversation to have with yourself, though. Agent Smith talking about wants and needs, rationalizing your some of your decisions. If you're about to make this big purchase, you think, well, I know I don't really need it, but am I really going to use this? Is it really worth it? Could I be spending this money on something else? But like, those are all personal decisions for sure. Mr. Smith, uh, what did you think of the split cab not having a uh, light up light up marquee? There's no mention in any dis uh, description of one being there. The split cab? What do you mean? You're talking about the, uh, the class of 1981? I didn't... Uh, sp the split cab? The SP... Oh, I'm I, Street Fighter 2? Is that what you're talking about? I don't know. You're going to have to... Uh, comment again, Mr. Steven, so that I understand because I'm I'm challenged mentally. Uh, Tony C says I had to pay 300 for Pac-Man 40th and 28 for a riser just to mod it and fix it with a, a Pi 3 arcade graphics art and 25 great vertical uh, period games. Come on, one up. Yeah, I mean, listen, I got I'm sitting here. Busting my butt trying to make a Raiden 2 cab, which Raiden 2, that's not a hard game to emulate. I mean, where is that vertical shooter game uh, cab? I mean, where are those vertical games? Does it, excuse me, does it all have to be the same publisher per cab? Maybe it does. To lock up these licenses, maybe. You know, Capcom may not want to be on the same cab as a Konami. And I get that. But let's get some variety out there. Because one thing that I Arcade is doing is that while they may not have some of these super marquee grade a triple a whatever titles they do have a variety uh, of kind of what i would consider deep cuts now i don't want console games on my arcade machines i don't i don't want it uh just this is just not doesn't make any sense to me um so don't do that i don't want that but uh but yeah i mean what about just a vertical shooter um cab go with that go with that form factor Okay, so let's uh, let's talk. We got to listen. Oh wow, the thing that just blew up. So we talked. We we went over some of the Twitter comments about the TMNT, um, the Turtles in Time cab may go down as the most controversial cabinet that RK One Up has ever produced. I know it's the most controversial to date, by far. You basically gave us the same cab that you gave us back in the very beginning of Generation Three. The same cab that I could get for $3.99 without a lit marquee, um, you're trying to sell now for you know almost double the price, $650, their most expensive cab. It's ridiculous, um, especially when I think there's a case to be made for a $650 cab if we're talking about a Terminator 2 shooter cab with a very specific gun paraphernalia. Yeah, our peripheral. I'm sorry, paraphernalia? That's something else, isn't it? Like, oh, it's, it requires a drink. <sighs> Vocabulary is tough, kids. Study, study hard. Peripheral. Peripheral. Per, per, peripheral. I think paraphernalia just works. <laughs> but anyway, but, but a specific gun uh, for a very specific game, a very demanding graphical game. Maybe you throw a couple other games on there, uh, a couple of titles on there, but... but Six hundred fifty dollars for something very specific, maybe a, maybe a high demand racing cab, with something a little more elaborate than what we've seen so far, is one thing. But think about it. Think about the fact that you could get a sit down outrun cab for less than you can a TM a Turtles in Time cab with two games on it, a four player configuration that they've already made several times over. Um, six fifty. Then we can't even get beyond that without another controversy brewing about the games. So the games, the games, the games. There's only two games. People losing their minds. Cats and dogs living together. It is mass hysteria. Let's head on over to their website so that we can discuss in some detail what we're looking at. So the U.S. of A, America, RK One Up. Go to their website. This is what you're going to see. The reserve now. Okay, here you go. Here is. The cab you're talking about right now, Turtles in Time, RK 1-Up, available, bundle, two games. Two games. That's all you're getting, right? That's what they're that's what they're telling us. Now, three decades later, RK 1-Up is thrilled to make available Turtles in Time, and yep, the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game is included as well. So they're kind of making a big deal about having two games. 
Now, once again, once again, I use I use the three ninety nine price point as a reference. So let's think about this. Three ninety nine gets you a four player cab with the exact games list, no lit marquee, but you got a matching riser. So we start at four hundred dollars. Then we add a stool, a lit marquee, and Wi Fi. What do you think? Is that worth two hundred and fifty dollars to you? Seriously, I don't think a lit marquee at this point should be any price difference whatsoever. That should just be a standard. And then the stool, if you, if you want to call that an adder, sure. But at most, this is a $500 cab. This is a $500 cab. But given the fact that Big Blue just came out and it's $600, okay, $600, right? Or maybe $550. Maybe this is the same price of the OutRun cabs. Kind of makes sense. Well, it doesn't really make sense, but you know what I'm saying. But to go $650... And then there's all that uproar, but here's where it gets crazy. So if you scroll down, what do you see? Available from our partners, Best Buy. Now, if you click on that, it's going to take you to a Best Buy website. But those of you that were part of my live stream know that that's not what was there originally. What was there originally was a link to the Best Buy website in U.S. and the Best Buy website in Canada. And when you went to the Canadian Best Buy website, this is what you saw. Now, they you can see that on on their on their website you can't there's no link for the Canadian Best Buy link right or the site you can't just get there from their website now why is that why did they change that because that's where i went go back to my live stream on thursday and you'll see it that's where we went we clicked on the link right from their website boom there you go and you know lo and behold it brought you to this check this out now i think they're all, honestly i think rk1 was just trying to hide this from us I think they really are trying to hide it here. That should be it. I think that's it. Yes, here we go. Okay, so I think that RK One is trying to hide this from the general public. I don't know why. Because, and the reason I say that was because the link was there before and now it's not. And this is why that link is not here. Now, the $829 in Canadian, that's about $667 US. So that's about what, what you know, it's, it's close to $650, right? Uh, there's that October 15th, which is actually like, what is that, 12 days after the U.S. Best Buy will make it available. Okay, so that's all pretty close. The price is pretty close. What's not pretty close is the freaking games list. This blew up everything. This is insane. How can you have this much of a discrepancy between the two cabs? It says right here in several places, okay, packed with six classic games. Then you scroll down and you see what those games are. I did an entire video about those extra four games that this the, the Canadian version is claiming is going to be on this cab. The main event, Crime Fighters, Metamorphic Force, which is actually, I'd never heard of it before, but it looks like Konami's X-Men game. It really does. It's not X Men, obviously. It's your your. It's kind of like Knights of the Round in a way, but then you transform. But graphically, it's got the same style as X Men. So this may have came out before or after X Men. I'm not sure, but it looks just like X Men, the Konami game. And then Vendetta is uh, kind of like a. It's a beat 'em up, but these are all four players. Vendetta is like a. We'll go back to my other video and see, and you can actually see I have I have video clips of all four of these games. It's kind of like a. Uh, not so much final fight, more of like double dragon, but with four players. So it's kind of cool. But, but listen, $650 is a lot of money for sure. Uh, especially when we've seen the four player cabs go for three ninety nine all day long. The biggest one we saw was 500. That was, uh, that was, uh, the, Se the Sega cab, uh, you know, revenge of death adder. That was, that was the most expensive one, uh, to, to add another $150 to that just to get a stool. Didn't make any sense to anyone. Uh, Death Adder had five games. So having six would be a hell of a selling point, wouldn't it? I can't believe it's just a Canadian audience or the Canadian customers are going to get this. But why the discrepancy? Why the discrepancy? Why are you trying to hide it from us? The link was there on the Arcade One Up website. You could go to both Best Buy and Best Buy Canada. Now the link is not there. Of course, the website still exists. It's Best Buy, you know? Just go to the Best Buy Canadian website, and there it is. And you can see it all day long. Six games versus the two that they say we're getting. Now, why would you want to hide this from, let's say it's let's say it's on both. Let's say it, it's on every cab you buy. Why in the world would you want to hide that? That's a massive selling point. The number of games that are going to be on this is a massive selling point. 
or in the, in, in everyone in the public perception, as some of the Twitter comments we saw, uh, it, it's a massive negative. We're talking about two games. No one is excited about this. No one is pre-ordering this cab. And, you know, it's, I think, let me look this up real quick. I think to make matters worse, well, not to make matters worse, but I did a survey on my own little channel, my little 19K Fox channel. And what you'll see is uh, most of these, now I'm going to tell you that most of these votes were cast before pre-orders went live before we knew what the prices were. Let me scroll down, get this set up, and then I'll I'll share my screen with you so you can see what I'm looking at. Here it is. Okay, so let me go back and let me sh we'll just we'll just look at this friend. And it's not a scientific um, poll, obviously, but um, I think here there you go. Okay, so here it was four days ago. All right, before we had uh, our big uh, our big pre-order debacle or whatever. Um, these numbers didn't look much different. They were about this. I think they were maybe 17 and 8% or 17% for the big blue and 8%. Uh, I did. Some people said, why didn't you put, uh, both? I didn't want that in this, uh, survey. I didn't want it in this poll. I wanted to, to try to see if I could gauge the excitement for the actual cabinets themselves. And I also wanted people to be able to say, you know, neither one. I'm not interested. That would tell me there's there, there's some people that weren't inter interested in either one, and then which one was getting most of the attention. I mean, this speaks for itself. You know, anticipation for Turtles in Time was low based on everything we had heard. The two games, the two games, the two games. Every everybody's saying basically it's the same cab, which is it, it's fair. You're getting Wi-Fi, okay, but on a four-player beat 'em up, what would be the purpose of the of the the live other than leaderboards, which is cool. But, you know, uh, sticker shock is crazy. 234 votes. I think uh, before pre-orders happened, I was right at 200 votes. And there you go. 78% weren't even, they weren't even going to buy either one of them. Nobody was pumped for either. Uh, and, you know, considering considering the amount of, you know, the percentages here, what is that, 22%? 22% out of the 22%, over half of that, or two-thirds of that, is for the big blue. 7% were turtles in time seven percent that's that's not good so why wouldn't you list the six games to build that excitement to get people pumped about it because just my little youtube poll shows there's not there wasn't a bunch of anticipation a lot of hype for this i think it's i think if i did another poll which i may which artwork is better the original tmnt cab or the turtles in time no matter where you fall, even if you like both, I think you're probably going to say that the original artwork looked better. Now, what is a better shape, the new four-player cab or the old four-player cab? You might have a split decision there. Let's say it's 50-50. But nobody's going to be happy paying almost twice for the same amount of games. You know, I think a lot of people would say, well, listen, if I'm only getting two games, where's the non-stool variant? You know, can I get the, can I go without a you know, lit deck protector? I mean, it's, it's just a bunch of money, especially when you have multiple cabs. 650 is, you're, you're, you're knocking on the door of, that's potentially the, the, the total cost of two cabs. And, you know, people have those conversations. Those are real conversations that have, that happen. You know, they have in their heads. And if I've got a budget and if I've got X amount of floor space in my arcade, am I really going to do that? Am I going to jump off that cliff? And spend six hundred fifty dollars for two games. It's going to take up eh, roughly the space of two cabs. When think about it, if you get two cabs, let's say you paid eight hundred dollars for two cabs, you got two for four hundred. Let's say you got two both of the legacies. That's twenty four games for eight hundred dollars versus two games for six hundred and fifty dollars. I mean, really, when you start to have these are the conversations that people have within our circles that are that are looking at buying cabs. I'm just saying. I'm just saying you got to really think about it. You have to really think about it when you're RK1 up trying to set these prices and trying to get people to buy into this and to be, I think more importantly, to try to get people to be psyched about where the company is going. And I didn't see any light gun games, which I think a lot of people did. I didn't see another driving game which I mean, I think a lot of people are. And I think for the most part, um, a lot of people were just disappointed in the fact that they didn't really follow through with more information on some of the cabs they've already announced. 
to be honest, I, to be honest with you, you know, and it's like, I, I you know, I, I have, I've spent thousands of dollars on these things. I enjoy it. I enjoy the product. All of you, for the most part, I think do. We want this company to succeed. We're not having fun. Well, maybe we're having a little bit of fun bashing on. <laughs> Only when they deserve it. Only when they deserve it, uh, for sure. Did I see another celebrity peek his head in here? Hey, what's up, man? Third floor kick with Jason. The Canadian version of this is awesome. Look at all those beat em ups. Yes. And how, what better way to justify the, the purchase price of $650 than including four games that we have not been able to get our hands on in this form factor? I mean, it's four, it, really, it's four brand new games, four Konami beat em ups that we haven't been able to get our hands on in this form factor by Arcade One Up. Why? I mean, listen, I Arcade has a freaking weekly stream where they talk about a new game they just got. Because it matters, the community wants to know what software they can have access to. They do. So every single game you can talk about is a win. It's a, it's, it's a feather in your cap, man. Think about it. Uh, the first cab that Scabby wanted to come out with was Dragon's Lair, which, he has, uh, which we have no idea what is going on with it. Guy needs to get on it. Yes, there is a huge fan base for a very unique game. I'm not, I'm not that guy. But there are so many people that are just, they just love that cab. Space Ace, Dragon's Lair, it's a very unique gaming experience. And people are super nostalgic for that. And you announced it in January, and now we have nothing. You should have said something. Address them. You know, it's like the girl you brought to the dance, and you're not even talking to her. You're just over there with your buddies. She's right there. I mean, get her a glass of punch or something. What are you doing? I mean, you should have brought them out. And said something, you know, address it. We're excited to continue to work on this, blah, blah, blah. You know, we, we can't wait to bring you Killer Instinct. It's on its way. Don't worry. You know, save your money, but nothing. And it's very disappointing. Very disappointing for sure. Um, let me jump down a little bit more. Uh, yeah, so we got uh, some pre-orders, uh, pre-ordered turtles, only because I missed out. And I think you're not, uh, that, that's, that's a lot of people's rationale. Fenrir Fire? Fenrir Fire? I'm messing up your name. I'm sorry. That's why I made my name simple. So anybody could say it because I'm, like I said, not, not bright. Not a lot going on up here other than this gorgeous head of hair. It takes me hours. No, it doesn't. It just falls into place. Wake up like this. What's up, girl? <laughs> Pre-order Turtles only because I missed out on the first one. And that's going, uh, that's going for more than Turtles in Time. So there's a lot of people that were that were just so heartbroken that they missed out on this first iteration of turtles. And I think that's the audience that was waiting with their freaking dollar, waiting to buy this. They didn't care if it only had two games. They just wanted a chance to play turtles. It's a very popular game. And when you hit them with 650, it just breaks their heart. I, I It breaks my heart for them because I know that I was so excited to get this thing, go way back on my channel. It was one, it was the first arcade one up that I ever got. It's the first one I did a mod on it. My first videos, very basic, you know, but I, I mean, I love, I was reporting on these things, you know, before then, but I was so excited about that third generation that came out. And when I got this one, that was it. But there was so many people that missed out on it. Just, they didn't even have the opportunity to get it. And I think that's the market for this. So to hit them with 650. Yeah. Jason likes the original better. I do. I do. I think that the, the faces on the Turtles in Time art looks kind of weird, kind of creepy. And I don't know. They just they could have done more with it, you know? I would have liked just some of the sprites, the actual characters themselves that are in the game, just plaster that. But they're, they're trying to be authentic, and I'm not going to take anything away from, from that because that's, you know, that's important. It's really important to do. I think, let me scroll up. I think, I see, I wasn't going to, Mega Drive, Justin, I was not going to do that to you. I was not going to skip over your super chat, man. $5, thank you so much. I use my X-Men versus Street Fighter to play six other cabinets uh, with using original CP uh, control panel. And then uh, NBA Jam plays Turtles and Golden Axe. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I, I, CP, original CP and PCB maybe. I mean, that's what you mean to say. Uh, RK 1UP could do this. Yeah, I mean, well, yes. Uh, I think that, I think that, you're probably getting this into some licensing issues, Mega Drive, Justin. I think that they're gonna. That's why you don't see a lot of crossover. Uh, you really have Konami cabs, uh, Capcom cabs. Um, you know, the, the, there's there's a lot of uh, uh, 
separation there. Even go back to the the first gen, you had that separation from the get go. I think that's probably a condition of the licensing, which I'm okay with. But there's nothing wrong with PCB swapping if you've got that four player already. You know, just to get that PCB and just swap it out. And you want to rock that for a little while, you know, and then swap over. You know, that's 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 definitely fine too. I think the thing is with space, limited space. You know, people that can only afford to have three or four cabs, and that's it. That's all the room they have. Not everybody has the option to have a big arcade. So, uh, yeah, I, they definitely could. But, man, thank you so much for the Super Chat. I totally appreciate it. And uh, let me hit you with a little bit of who have we not had in a while. Let's do uh, let's do Wolverine. Crossover combination. Perfect. Variable combination KO. Player one wins. Game's over. Trying to call it quits. Outstanding game. Oh, I love that. I was so disappointed with uh with Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. They lost that X-Men licensing and it just oh, it was garbage. Uh Big Buck sucks. Hated it in the arcade. Hit detection sucked. I'm the, the Tony C, I don't think there's a lot of appeal there. I think you're right. I think that I think if you're talking about arcade enthusiasts, we're looking at other shooter games. There's a lot of older shooter games that they could have gone for. You know, if, if you want to go way back and start small and work your way up, you could have done that. There's a ton of them. Operation Wolf comes to mind. Could have been its own cat. Well, I don't know. I can't say that. They might ask $700 for it. But it could have been almost its own cab or that and a few more shooters of that er of that era, right? Same thing we saw with their first their first foyer into driving games where they started with OutRun. A fairly, and not very taxing, uh, you know, your PC wise or i'm sorry uh, cpu wise it, it wasn't going to use up a lot of that uh, horsepower to generate those games but it was a, it was a great way to get they had to practice they'd get the form factor right you know i think for the most part they kind of hit it out of the park for that and the price point you know retro looking back now it was really not that bad at 550 um especially when you get it on sale every now and then for 4.99 and uh now that we know they're not going to have any other driving games for a while, I might have to go pick one up now because I'm a driving game fan. Driving mm -hmm. game fan. For sure. For sure. Um, I'm just checking my notes over there. Uh, Tony C., I have a stool uh, for RK1UP, and, and, and they won't like it. I have a stool for Arcade 1UP, and they won't like it. I don't know what you mean. You mean you have a stool and they won't like it? Or they have, oh, are you talking about stool? Like a stool sample? That's disgusting. That's disgusting. Panic Flip Gaming. Uh, Tony, I can't stand that game. Talking to Tony. Uh, again, um, Tony Super. Oh, yeah, Big Buck Hunter. Yeah. So Big Buck Hunter. I can't stand uh, that game. Again, Monday morning meeting, uh, which most likely involve Fox's bourbon. Yes. Well, I think they probably drank something when they talked about price tags. Wow. Listen, if you... If you've got if you've got to if you've got to charge that, let's say for whatever reason, and there's many many reasons going on in those boardroom meetings and investors and trying to justify you know whatever. If you've got to ask that high a price tag, which I'm sure, so I'm not letting them off the hook, but some of that's maybe out of their control. Then you take every bit of software you have at your disposal and you throw it into these cabs, even if they don't quite fit, even if it was a two player game in a four player cab. Throw it in there. Whatever Konami game you had access to, you throw it in this one. Because you're trying to justify that 650, especially when Big Blue, ugly ass Big Blue, is going to have 12 games in it. And as you see, there's only three games in that 12 that have any crossover with the previous cabs. I mean, come on. You know, you're getting nine more games that you didn't get before through Arcade One Up. I think Super Puzzle Fighter is probably bigger than most people think. I think it's going to be a really, really fun game. That's going to be one of those very casual games you jump in and you play. Like I said, me and my wife played that on PS3. Uh, I downloaded that. It was a very, very fun game. I still have a copy of that for a PS1, uh, brand new, still sealed. It's a fun game. Of course, I'm kind of a Capcom fanboy. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to try to deny it. Um, it is what it is. It is what it is. Oh, I scrolled back too far. I got to scroll back. I, was like, I read that already. I did read that already. Uh, let me scroll back up. Uh, Walter says poop. Oh, poop joke. Yes, stool, poop joke. I got it. It's a poop joke. 
I built my own driving cab. RK one up can suck it, suck it, Trebek. I uh, took an RK one up first gen and made a two player uh, driving cab. It's funny, a, a goofball like me can go on eBay and buy some driving wheels for a PS two, and just very simply, it was just a, a it was really just a swap out of the control panel. The only thing I really did that that modified the cab was I screwed in some drawer slides. That's it to actually have the, but like everything else I can put right back. And uh, that was a two player driving cab. I, it can be done. It can be done. That's my point. It can be done. You could have a two player driving cab on a, on the, on a standard third generation RK one. up. I proved it. You can do it. It's fun. It doesn't wobble over the place. It doesn't fall down. You can crank on the thing. It works. I say that because, like, um, some of the off-road games, the uh, what was the uh, what was the guy's name, the off-road guy, Iron Man, Iron Man, Ivan, Ivan Iron Man, I can't remember, but uh, but his his off-road game, it had he had cabinets with three steering wheels, and it was just a standard stand-up uh, arcade cabinet, but there were three wheels around that. I did it with two. You can do it. They they can play around with variants of that. Um, you know, there's there's something to be said about it. And there's a ton. There is just a ton of old racing games that they could play with beyond OutRun. And I would love to see a two-player. I mean, they could do it. You could just maybe widen. Maybe if you get a cab, think about this. If you get a cab and you widen it just a little bit to accommodate a 20-inch monitor. We all know you can put a 20-inch monitor in your stock RK1 up anyway. But let's say they made it a little bit wider and they put a 20-inch monitor in there. And they had a, it, was, it was, you know, two steering wheels. Now 650, 700. Well, okay. Now it's not as crazy to think about. You can see where your money's going. There's a lot going on there. There's a ton going on there. Hey, Big Reese, what's going on, brother? Uh, quality control needs to improve with uh, these price these price risers. Yes, absolutely. There's a lot that needs to improve for sure. Iron Stewart, thank you, thank you, thank you. I told you, I'm, not, I'm a little slow. Loca in the cabeza. Um, I always wondered who the hell was Ivan Stewart. Never knew until recently. Yeah, he was a, he was an off-road legend. Um, uh, Baja, where you take these trucks and they're lifted, and it's a it's it's like a it's like a marathon basically. Uh, what you're basically doing is trying to keep the truck together because there's a lot of broken parts. A lot of broken parts. Okay, uh, I wanted to talk about something that I had a viewer uh, ask about a specific thing that. They didn't see one of my videos, and that was let me fire this up. And that was the Super Pac Man and the settings that you could actually do on your countercade. And this is, I think, this is important because I was kind of excited about what I saw with this Super Pac Man countercade and where I saw that maybe the future of RK One Up could be going. We saw that micro SD card slot, we saw a standard USB slot on top, as well as the micro USB that's always been there. So there's a lot going on there. I'm curious to see what they're going to do, but. What I also neglected to show off was some of the game settings. So we're going to do that right now. So five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. What's going on? Back in, welcome back to the channel. And we're going to take a look at Super Pac-Man Countercade and the game settings that, um, that are available to you. So let's go over and switch over to camera number two. And you can see here we are looking at the Countercade. And the question I got from a viewer was, "Hey, what about the what about the game settings? Can you change the settings?" Yes, you can. It may be difficult to see. Kind of see right there on the bottom. Uh, what you can do is you can hold down the two-player button, or press the two-player button. Actually, if you highlight the game you want, we'll go to Super Pac-Man, two-player, and this these are the settings for Super Pac-Man. You have initial lives, uh, the bonus lives. You can set the target uh, score at which you get bonus lives, which is kind of cool. So you tab over uh, none, where you don't have the option to have any bonus lives, 30K to 100K, 30K to 80K, and just adjust that. And then now there you have three options there. Difficulty, obviously, go to easy, hard, or medium. Uh, demo song, if you want that, on, or demo sound, if you want that on or not. Let's go back to wherever the hell we were. There we go right there. And then, uh, you know, when you're done, just press the A button, get you out of here. And same thing, you go to here, go to Pac-Man, same thing, initial lives, bonus lives, difficulty, speed, which is interesting. You can go fast, normal, so it's normal or fast is all that is. 
back out. Rally X, uh, initial cars. You can see you can have, I think these are the enemy cars here. And then your rank, bonus cars, same thing. Let's go to Dig Dug. And these are your, these are all the things that you can change here. Initial lives, difficulty, uh, once again, is medium, hard, very hard. Oh, that's not, I don't know, I don't want that easy. Medium, so there's a lot to choose from there. And demo sound as well. Get out of there. And then we're back to Super Pac-Man. So there it is. Um, switch over back to camera one. So there you go. Uh, a lot. There's a lot going on there. A lot going on in those little counter caves that I think speaks for the future of what we could possibly see with RK One Up's full size um, offerings. I think that there's a lot that we could we could be jazzed about just with this first offering that we got with the counter caves. I'm interested to see the two player counter caves. I want to see. I want to see that form factor. I want to get my hands on one of those. Uh, so as soon as they become available, whenever I hear about it, I'm going to grab one for sure. I want to get one of those in my hands and check that out. I think that's going to be it's going to be kind of fun. I'm interested to see Big Blue if he has the same sort of he. I just gave a cabinet a gender. <sighs> Told you, not a lot going on up here. Not a lot going on there. Um, but no, I'll be interested to see what, what Big Blue has. Is, is it the same sort of PCB? Are we going to see a micro SD card slot? There has to be there has to be a use for that. Is that a way you can update the cab if you don't have Wi-Fi? Uh, but then again, there's no Wi-Fi in the cab, so I would think that a USB would be just fine. Why would they have that other option? I don't really know. I have yet to take that PCB out, but I think it's going to happen probably this week. I want to take a look at that. I want to see if there's a physical card in there. And you know what that means. If you've got the cards stored on a micro SD, why can't we add more games to it? I think the hacking community, if that's if that's the case, if that's where the games are stored, I think the hacking community is going to find a way to load that thing up and you're going to be able to just, I mean, put tons of games on these. That's not so exciting when you're talking about a countercade. It's very exciting if you're talking about a full-size cab. If you're talking about that, Turtles in time, you just spent $650 for. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to have 30 games on it? You know, 40 games, 50 games, you know. Maybe, maybe if you wanted a multi-cade, you could turn it into a multi-cade. I personally not a big fan of the multi-cades unless they're very specific. Like uh, I think that the Unico Neo Geo cab. Uh, I may be getting one of those. But you know what? After Unico announced the changes that they were making, I want to wait and make sure that I get that second version. And from what I understand, it's going to be difficult to, to, to determine which version you're getting the 2.0 or the 1.0. There is a bit of a difference. It's not a huge difference, but there is a difference. Better speakers. Some of the panel separation is different. Um, uh, another riser. I'm not real pumped about that, but um, I am a big Neo Geo fan. And I think that that would be really cool to have 50 uh, SNK games on that. How far are we from RK one up doing something like that with Capcom or is Unico going to beat them to the punch and do a Capcom cap with 50 games on it? RK one up then has a big issue. RK one up then potentially has a big problem because RK one up has several, as we've illustrated tonight, they've got several cabinets out there that are Capcom themed. They have several that are out there now beyond those three that we looked at. You know, Marvel vs. Capcom is included. If Unico can lock down a Capcom licensing that's going to have 50 games or 40 games on it, I would I would have to believe that a lot of those games that are already out there or available for RK One Up are going to be included in that Unico cab. And then for the the space conscious, how many are going to say, "Hey, I could spend." Two thousand dollars on arcade one-up stuff and get these games, or I could spend 500 600 with shipping, let's say, on a Unico Capcom cab, and I'm good. It's dangerous. Right now, it doesn't matter because for whatever reason, arcade one-up doesn't have any Neo Geo titles, so it's it's a, it's a non-point. But I'm telling you. Uh, it, it could be dangerous. So, so RK one up needs to really focus on, Hey, listen, the, the, we've got to make these cabs worth it. We've got to keep our customers happy. So, uh, I would mod the super Pac-Man counter K, but I would lose the headphone jack usage. I don't think I'd mod this one. I think those first generations are definitely, you know, prime for modding, 
But uh, with this one, this one for me personally, that freaking style. I mean, that, that 80s artwork, that 80s color scheme. It's already got the lip marquee. The headphone jack is nice. So I've already, and, and also bear in mind, I've already modded two countercades. I've got my Marvel versus Capcom three countercade. I've got the Raiden two countercade. Um, so, and those are really just kind of fun experiments, but for this one, I don't know that I would. Now, if you're going to mod it, um, there, I think there's a, you could probably retain that headphone jack. You could probably retain that, and listen, you already got the lit marquee, so all you'd have to do is change out this film. So I've shown you in the past on mine, well, you can actually just peel that off, that little marquee uh, decal there, peel that off, and have a new one printed by some place like you know, Game On Graphics with your custom whatever, and you're well on your way. I mean, you already got the lit marquee, the headphone jack, you could probably retain that. And uh, and I go crazy, man. I've also shown you on this channel how to make your own custom control panel for these. Uh, and I've done it twice uh, to I, what I think is a lot of success with these countercades. I was able to get the six button configuration in there. Uh, I'm rocking a PS Vita and it's fun. I love that one. I love that little arcade. Um, the only thing I regret is not making it a full size. Not going to say that won't happen. But yes, I mean, the PS Vita could definitely be a full size cab for sure. But, uh, but, you know, I think I've definitely got the, the horizontal sort of, uh, you know, correct aspect ratio working in, in my favor in that one. Uh, a full size cab would be a little bit different because of the aspect ratio. So, but I digress. Uh, like you buy a Mercedes and they give active green and rose tires. Oh yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Not the, not quite the, not quite what you paid for. Uh, I still want a ghost and goblins countercade. Kind of surprised that we haven't seen that, to be honest with you. Um, trying to think of the counter case that we have. Have we had a Capcom official Capcom uh, counter case? I don't know that we have. Uh, besides that, that one-off Street Fighter Two that was done for that, uh, yeah, that one of that third. There were only thirty available, and nobody could get one. But that should be changing this year. So I think it's going to be exciting. Those are going to be that's going to be a really cool thing to have. Because I think that it's out of the box. It's going to be much more uh, user friendly, much more, much more fun to be able just to quickly play a little two player Street Fighter or something or Mortal Kombat or whatever. Um, and I think it's going to get a lot of people excited about if they buy this and they like it. Wow, maybe I'll think about a, a full size. Let's call it a gateway drug. It's a gateway drug for sure. Some of us don't need that much of a push. Some of us, some of us are already on the edge, and we're just we're just ready to jump. Preloaded games from an RK one up SD card, maybe, perhaps. Um, what if? What if? Mega Drive. Just, just talking to you. Well, no, I'm talking to everybody else in the chat. But you know what I'm saying. Uh, what if you can purchase? Micro SD cards from RK One Up with games on it. What if you could just pull the micro SD card from this cab that you bought over here and put it in this other cab you have over here? Is it possible? Instead of swapping physical PCBs, maybe you're just swapping micro SD cards from cab to cab to cab. Now, keep your eye on eBay because I guarantee you those micro SD cards from Arcade One Up with those games are going to go for premium dollars. But if you bought Big Blue for $600 and you see a dude is selling a you know, micro SD card on eBay for $100 and you know you can just hot swap them, why not? What happens when somebody takes their micro SD card and copies it? Unless they've got some great anti-piracy software on those micro SD cards, that's going to be rampant for piracy. And you know, there goes their business model. Now that you've seen you've seen that happen before, those concerns were really prevalent with the PSPs. Um, you know, that's why Sony went to a proprietary memory card, and it all just went to hell with the PS Vita. Really sad. Actually, they started with the PSP Go. This guy right here. They went with the uh, they went with the M2. Look at that. You can see me. What? Um, they went with the M2 um, memory, 
instead of the uh, instead of the what do they call that the memory stick pro duo the small one so yeah you can see it's right there's m2 on the side you see that yep m2 uh, it was proprietary and they use that in some of their their cell phones and then the PSP goes and then I don't think that it went don't fall don't fall stay um, I don't think that it really went too much farther beyond that so yeah the you know it, it's a, it's a quick way to to kind of in the handheld market kill kill your uh, kill your product but uh, it's possible it's possible micro SD cards piracy running rampant but the kicker is with that you have to buy one of their cabs so maybe they have a little bit of piracy maybe they have a little bit of players you know swapping games or swapping SD cards. But the point of entry is still that six hundred dollars. You got to have the cab. You got to have the PCB that will accept that micro SD card. So, you know, um, they're still getting some money. They're still getting some money. They may, may miss out on some cab sales, but I don't know. It's it's I like, but that's what interests me about it. What is that? What does that mean moving forward? There's so many options, and the hacking community is vast. And if they can hack this thing. With all these these points of entry now, before it was just the micro uh, SD, yeah, the micro uh, USB. I'm sorry, the micro USB uh, plug on the bottom on the counter cades, not on your full size. Uh, that was the first time I saw it, sort of a standard USB connection on these things. Uh, but now these counter cades have uh, USB. I'm assuming 2.0 because the connector isn't blue. That would be 3.0. So I'm assuming that's USB 2.0. They have micro SD cards and they still retain the micro. Uh, uh, USB. Did I say micro USB? There's so many micros. I keep saying micro. Micro SD card and then micro USB. So there's three main connection points for data with this with this uh, board. So it's very interesting to see where they could go with that. Very interesting for sure. Let me let me scroll back here a little bit. Um, I got the uh, MVSX, probably the best three quarter I own. Yeah, I mean, look at the games. Look at the games. 50 games. You really feel like you got your money's worth. And at only $500, um, it's kind of hard to beat. Unico wanted to make the uh, MVSX have swappable art. Oh, for the different games. I expect them to do the same for their Big Blue, if that's in the works. I think that um, I think that a lot of that played into what the, what the MVS, the original MVS, what that was. It was kind of revolutionary for its time. You had a you had a cabinet that usually you would have to it would retain it would have like you know one PCB one big game board in the cab. Neo Geo said, "Well, what if we made a rack inside there and you could have more than one game, and then the player." could just select the game that they wanted. So they would have a custom marquee for maybe two games. Usually it was four. And they could walk up to the machine and they would have a variety. And the guy that owned the pizza shop or whatever, he could buy the cards instead of the physical because he was also limited on space in the pizza parlor or the whatever, you know. Probably wasn't a full-blown arcade. Uh, well, I mean, I'm sure it was, but, but a lot of those smaller venues were really tied on space. So they would get a Neo Geo, an MVC, MVS, and they would have the, and you would basically have slots, right? So that kind of swappable art made a lot of sense for the MVS X, the one that Unico did. It all tied into that variety that Neo Geo had back in the day. Would that still be something that would apply to a Capcom machine? The Big Blue was kind of a response to the MVS back in the day. It was kind of Capcom's response to that Neo Geo where you would have multiple games. Uh, and it was also a way to streamline manufacturing, save, you know, cut down on cost. And really all you had was the marquee was different per you know game, but the cabinet was just blue. We saw a lot of this with some of their other cabs, uh, like the, some of the early Street Fighter 2 cabs were black. They were just black. Like if you look at a original Marvel vs. Capcom, I mean um, Alien vs. Predator cabs, they were black. And they just had a marquee, and sometimes it would have a single poster, like 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 a single piece of art stuck to the side of a black background, just like some of those original Street Fighter II World Warrior, kind of like what what you see on the uh, on the Capcom uh, the Capcom Legacy cab, just sort of a standard 
you know, one image on the side, and that was it. And you could easily paste over that with something else. Uh, Walter says, I had to upgrade the buttons. Uh, big reason. Oh, yeah. Um, but it was easy. And yes, the best ones I have also. The, the, the button issue is another way they could justify that price tag, couldn't they? They could have Sanwa controls, HAP. Um, they could definitely do that. For sure. MVSX, uh, Tony C says, MVSX is uh, two-fighter centric. Needs all 140 plus Neo Geo MVS games. Yes, Neo Geo was kind of known for fighters, weren't they? Um, but you're right. When you come, when they when they come at you with 50 games, you want to have a little more variety because 50 fighters, and I know they're not all, they're not all fighters, but 40 fighters out of, out of 50 is a lot. I love fighting games, but you know, it gets a little tiresome. And if you play with somebody who's better than you, it gets even worse. Uh, Unico has better buttons and a riser. There are there are the two there are the two new cabs. Yeah, it's uh they do have better buttons. I arcade also has better buttons. I arcade has better sound. I don't like their cab style, but I could get over that if they had better games. And the game selection for me is where you're at. And if I'm gonna spend that much money. I know I'm getting a ton of horsepower. That's the thing. I mean, you're getting a ton of horsepower with the IR arcades. You're getting a pretty big game selection, but you know, it's kind of like you got to spend a bunch of money up front and then you got to also buy some of the games that you want individually. I think there's a lot of hidden costs with an IR arcade. And if they had AAA games, but they don't really have AAA games. Not yet. Not yet. And I think that they're on their way. And you see with every new release, people get excited. But, you know, it is very, and I'm going to say this, it's very similar to having a PS4 and then having to buy games for your PS4. You spend a lot of money on the device, but it's got all the horsepower to run the games you want, so you buy those games, whether you download them or whether you buy the physical media. It's the same thing. So it's not like it's a bad business model. It works for everybody else. I just don't know that you're going to have, like with PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, you've got those fans, you've got that, massive games library they can continue to draw from and make remakes and all that so you know i, I we'll see we'll see they got to bump up their uh, for me to buy one they got to really bump up that uh the games list but um yeah because right now i'm more inclined to buy an mvs x than an ir arcade just me just me personally everybody's different everybody's different Walter says, anything can and will be cracked with enough time. Absolutely. Especially when you have that many points of entry. I'm telling you, micro SD cards, USB 2.0, micro USB. That, when you give that many people, that many doors into your house, they're eventually going to break it down. And then get inside and see what you get. No minimum 50 games, no buy. That's a good point, especially when you're talking about this price point. This price point, you know, $650. It's insane. Uh... Immortan, I'm I'm Morton Bob, uh, proud four slot MVS owner. Just picked up a Neo Geo SD RAM uh, SD ROM cart. My respect, sir. Samurai Showdown is amazing. Ah, uh, that's it's a great cab. It's a it's just a great cab. A piece of um, not Americana, a piece of history. But uh, but I you know I gotta say. You have the advantage where the Unico guys don't. You have that original four button configuration. That's one thing I I just it sucks that they got six buttons on that unit on the Unico unit. That's not NVIDIA. I mean that's just that's just not Neo Geo. You got it's just the four. What did they do? What did they do? But mad respect to you, sir. Absolutely. I Arcade has the best shooters so far. Yes, you are correct, sir. I deem you correct. Super Leaf 64. I, uh, I don't. If you respond to this, but I don't. If you, I don't know if you. I don't know if you respond to this. Uh, but uh, I think if RK One Up simply made the cocktail table taller and a, and a bigger monitor, it would be perfect for multiplayer. Others have said it, but but Super Leaf, it, it's you make a valid point. I'm gonna have to install a little a set of legs on mine just to get it up uh, where it's more comfortable. 
but you're exactly right. They're making this, they're kind of making the same mistake with the infinity game table. And it's more of an issue with the infinity game table, in my opinion, because there's only one thing you have, and that's the screen itself. At least with the cocktail cabs, you have the controls to consider and everything. So it's easier to sort of see where they, well, they skimped on the screen, but that is what it is. But, uh, but yeah, no, you're absolutely right. If they go with a bigger monitor, you can lift the thing up easily. And I'm probably going to do a video this week. I'm going to, I'm going to put a lift kit <laughs> on my cocktail cab. I got a black series Capcom. Um, you can put a lift kit on it pretty easily. No problem for just a couple bucks. Uh, I'll say a couple, 10, 20 bucks. Um, brand new, nice hardware, uh, furniture risers, all the good stuff. But, um, but that screen, right? That screen is going to get you every time. And, um, you know, with the old, it's not such, you know, when you're talking about pinball, you need that 10, 100, uh, 1080p, um, high definition, you know, I'm not talking about bargain basement HD. I'm talking about actual full HD. 1080p. I don't want 720. Uh, it's got to be up there. But you can get away with that when you're talking about Street Fighter 2. So go with the bigger... Uh, if you're going with the cocktail cabinet, excuse me, why not you go with the 24 inches? It just makes sense. IRK needs to focus more on modern retro style games and less on looping and 80s games like that. I'm telling you, you're absolutely right, Tony, because listen... I don't know who has played uh, Streets of Rage 4, but it is awesome. It's awesome. I love it. The fact that you can actually unlock the characters from the other games, and I don't mean the characters from the other games, but in the new art style. I mean pixel for pixel. That you're represent. You're getting the guy from. You're getting Axel from Street Fighter Streets of Rage 2, and you're bringing him in, and he looks the same. Stuff like that is fun. It is really fun. It's out of the box thinking. It's awesome. And now we see DLC coming out with the uh, Mr. X Nightmare DLC. Uh, it's just it's awesome. That there is so much you can do with a with a side scrolling 2D game. I mean, think about the you could have think about the levels you could have. Look, think about the intricate levels you could have when you sort of restrict yourself back to two dimensions. Um, because the art is beautiful. I mean, it looks great. Uh, you can have some real, you could take real, almost shot for shot. Like if you're talking about like an anime or an existing cartoon, you could take that artwork and put it on the screen and animate that. And there's your game. And it looks exactly like the TV show you're watching. It's, uh, so you, you go after that. You go after true sequels. Uh, Tony, you're exactly right. You go after true sequels of old games like Streets of Rage 4, um, you f go, in that, go in that vein. If they can pick up, listen, I tell you what's going to what's gonna watch, what's going to turn the freaking tide. If they can get in really tight with .emu, the company that did Streets of Rage 4, they did the new Turtles game, Shredder's Revenge. Uh, if they can get in tight with that company and snag those, I'm telling you, I arcade stock is going to go through the roof. People are going to start like, wait, wait a minute. You know, that's, there's something there. Let me check that out. Um, you know, now they are kind of competing. They're getting into the PS4 Xbox zone. But if you're going, most of the fans of those old games want it in that traditional form factor. So if you can, if you can get that, it's like the best of both worlds. Um, I would love, I was actually, there's a video that I did on my, so my PS Vita countercade, I was, you know, I was doing remote play on my PS4 and I was playing Streets of Rage 4 on my little countercade. And I got to tell you, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. You know, it makes you want to build a PS4 arcade one up, you know, or something. It's, it's just a lot of fun. So I think that, I, I think that an I arcade could potentially blow it open. And really say, listen, we are the one-stop shop for retro games and retro sequels. Here you go. We got the horsepower by one machine, and you're set. And who else could say that? Nobody else could. Nobody else could. Uh, Footsies. Uh, it's a fighting game made with uh, basically stick figures. Oh, okay. It's so fun and simple. Totally an iArcade game possibility. Yes. Think about 
Think, think about your favorite games of all time. A lot of them were fairly simplistic. A lot of them were. Uh, Walter says, uh, I, I Arcade uh, could be an easy sale with Street Fighter 4. Yes. Shredder's Revenge and the new R-Type that just came out. Uh, Zhang needs to be pursuing these, and I I think that he is. They have the original R-Type. I, I think that he is. I think that, that listen, they are nothing against at games. At games, I'm going to say it right now. At games has the superior pinball, virtual pinball. I'm going to say it. You know, um, that's just my opinion. But I think that II Arcade has the superior multicade. They've got some of that infrastructure. If they can get some of these licensing deals, if they can lock some of these things down. Yep, yep. Especially when it's a when when you're when you're they're still purchasing the games. They're not asking for um, they're not asking for uh, a, a game just to be included in their product. They're asking for the ability to sell games to the public. That's what they're asking for. Just like iTunes, just like uh, the, the PlayStation Network, just like Xbox. You know, they're asking the same thing. They just want the ability to sell their product to other customers because they're still going to charge you for it. But if you got that ability, that'd be pretty dope. That'd be pretty dope. Big Reese. Uh, modern retro games is where iArcade will stand out. I agree. hundred percent. Look at this. Five dollars. What is going on? Ezekiel, the Chicago Retro Ranger. Uh, sorry, I'm late, Fox. No need to apologize. Looking for a Gen 3 to mod in a DZ theme cab? DBZ? Absolutely. Man after my own heart. I will show you when done. Drink up. Absolutely. I will. I will love it. Now, you know my favorite. You know my favorite. Oh, my goodness. Am I empty? Um, you know my favorite. Generation 3 cab. I know it's back up to 399, but if you can catch it at 350, get the Street Fighter versus Capcom, or the Street Fighter versus um, uh, X Men, and uh, or I'm sorry, X Men versus Street Fighter, and get that. And to pay for some of your mods, you can sell the PCB, you can sell that lit marquee, whatever, uh, or just sell the PCB and the Wi Fi and get some of that good money. Get some of that money for sure. And for my fellow DBZ fan, I forgot what I hit you with last week. Let me hit you with, I think I hit you with Trunks. Let me hit you with Brawley. Thank you so much for the super chat. Do appreciate it. I was cracking my neck. You caught me. I'm uh, sorry about that. Uh, Tony C, anything I can play on Coin Ops or Pi, I won't get on IRK. There you go. Soggy Kid. What's up, man? How you been? Uh, Ad Games better have better. <laughs> for $900, your ass better have better pinball. Good Lord. That's true. That's true. Uh it's, it's a lot of money, but you have access to a ton of stuff for sure. Hit me with $5 again, Fox. What is your favorite DBZ game? Let me watch. Let me give you this, and then I'll tell you right after this. Hey, Frieza! Huh? huh? When I get my hands on... Ah! outstanding so my favorite game that's a tough one that is a tough one so i'm a big fan of the budokai series budokai 3 was great infinite world was the pseudo successor to the Budoka uh the budokai uh series it's kind of like in my opinion it's like a budokai 4 so i really like that one shin budokai on the psp i love both those games i got those for sure uh the tenkaichi series is pretty good not bad. Raging Blast, uh, I think it was two, actually included the uh, the movie that wasn't released in the States, so I like that one. But the one I play the most, honestly, is uh, Dragon Ball Legends on my iPad. I play it daily. I've been playing that thing for, I, I think it's been almost three years. 
a little less than three years. It's just one of those things. I just play it every morning. Just kind of just wake up, just do it, you know, just log in and play the hell out of it. It's uh, it's fun. It's definitely a lot of fun, but I'm, I got to say, I'm probably a big fan. What game do I go back and play? It's probably those PS2 uh, Budokai games. It probably is. Of course, I rock my PSP from time to time, and it's Budokai, uh, Shin Budokai. So I like those games for sure. But just, oh, man, the PS2, PS3, just a ton of Dragon Ball love for sure. And then, of course, PS4. I never really got into uh, Kakarot, which actually looks pretty good. But, uh, but, and then the, uh, what the battles, battle Z never played that. It didn't look at it. It felt, it felt like, uh, it felt like Dragon Ball Sagas, which is just a garbage game, um, a garbage game for the PS2. But in any event, that's kind of where, that's kind of where my head's at. Those are the kind of the games that I prefer. Sort of that 2D fighting with 3D backgrounds, kind of what I like. So Tenkanchi was good, the over the shoulder view, but I don't know. I think I'd probably go back to Budokai, Budokai for sure. Uh, Tony C, I love my uh, at games legends pinball. Getting a vert games collection now that I have the control. But yeah, the control. See, that's the other thing that pushes it over the edge for me. You get that thirty-two inch monitor, and you can drop in a control panel, and now I can play vertical shooters. I can tell you this, just between me and you, if you know the people at at games, if they, if it's if it's possible, if they make it available. Raiden, Raiden 2 specifically, I don't know why. I just got some thing for Raiden 2. If I could play Raiden 2 on their pinball machine, I will buy one. I will buy one, and I will have Raiden 2 artwork on the damn pinball game. Because they come packed with a bunch of pinball games anyway, and I think that's the only... I mean, I Attack from Mars looks good for for uh, for RK 1-Up, and I think that's... But I don't know. I think if I'm going to spend $600 at least, bare minimum... I think I got to make the leap and go with a uh, go with the at games. Just looks better. Uh, yeah, I could see iArcade being the Steam machine of arcade. It's a good point. It's a good point. They're building themselves that way. They've built in the hardware. Um, it's there. It's there. Um, and I, I think if you're talking about people that live in the city, they don't have a bunch of room. Small apartments, small houses. Maybe a dad has young kids. Maybe a mom has young kids. There's a lot of there's a lot of female gamers out there, um, you know, and they're concerned about space. It comes back to that old, you know. This is this is the split. RK One Up has. If you want if you want to build out an arcade, RK One Up is where you're at. A big physical room full of games. RK One Up is where it's at. If you love arcades. But you only have room for one, maybe two. It's that's what you got to do. You got to go. I mean, I think you really got to go with uh, I Arcade because if if you want to future proof yourself, tons of horsepower. There you go. It just comes down to me the games. If they can get on board with some of these AAA titles, in my opinion, then uh, then that's where it's going to be. That's where it's at. That's how you get more people in. Especially if you're going to miss out on some of these classics here, the CPS two Capcom games, the CPS three Capcom games, like Marvel vs. Capcom two. Uh, if you're going to miss out on that because licensing, whatever, then lock yourself in with .mu and really get involved in some of those new retro games. And that's how you set yourself apart. And I like your idea. I like I like the way you refer to it, the Steam machine of arcade machines. It makes a ton of sense. Machini90, what's up, brother? How you doing? Happy 4th to you as well. Thank you so much for stopping by. I do appreciate you stopping by, man. Great, great artist, Machini90. If you just if you just like watching somebody draw, it's very relaxing to see him draw. He does a lot of uh, anime inspired drawings. He does some Dragon Ball Z characters. So uh, so uh, so yeah, uh, Ezekiel, uh, you might want to check this dude out. I'm just saying, good uh, good artist for sure. Uh, can't even imagine how you even get that on paper, brother. It's crazy. Two things I don't want on my pinball machine: the word pinball. And a joystick with buttons. Uh, I have arcade machines for that. It's an option, Soggy. You don't have to do that. You don't have to add that. Uh, you can just get your, you know, with that games, if you just want to get your pinball machine without all the buttons, without that joystick, you're fine. You're fine. You don't have to do that. Uh, but it is kind of cool that it's an option. It is. Uh-oh. Tony, what are you doing? All right, people, listen up. Tony is selling. His modded arcade one-up Galaga now uh, that I have. Uh, well, yeah, 
at Games Legends Pinball with Control Panel. Don't need it anymore, even though I fixed the art on it and it looks great. So I think there's a, there's a big secondary market for some of these early adopters of RK1 machines. Um, I'm not quite ready to sell any of mine yet, but if I was, the first thing I would sell would probably be my first generation Street Fighter. That was my test bed, though. That was my test bed for a lot of my new mods. Um, the two-player racing cab is based on that. Is based on that first generation. I think if I'm going to make a permanent two-player racing cab or a single-player racing cab, I'm going to have to do probably a third-generation cab, maybe another X-Men versus Street Fighter cab. I say another because I own two. I got the one I'm modding directly behind me. Yeah, the versus Predators coming along. Did I tell you the, the, the side artwork is on it? But you can't see it. That's right. Because I'm teasing you. Uh, the side artwork is on. Most of the wiring is done. I'm going to be honest with you. I think I'm having a little bit of an issue with my with my monitor. I think it's just the uh, the control board. So i got to work that out. But uh, actually, 95% of the wiring is complete. I, I just did it today. I did a full functions check today. That's why I found my uh, the issue with my with my screen. So... You know, no big deal. We're gonna, I'm gonna work through that. Uh, I'm sure it's just a controller board. I don't think it's, I don't think it's the actual monitor itself. I was running it. I was running. I actually put it. If you follow me on Instagram, I have a short clip of me running Alien versus Predator. I was running it temporarily through my monitor. So if there's some kind of little issue, I'll get it figured out. Don't worry about it. Um, if I got to order a new control board, I will. But, uh, but yeah, that's coming along nice. And Alien versus Predator, my favorite. Uh, Maybe not my number one favorite arcade machine or, or arcade game, but it's definitely, definitely up there for sure. My brother, Snow Dub, smash that like button. Do what this guy says. Smash the like button, peeps. It does my channel a world of good. Man, Snow Dub, I'm so glad you stopped by, brother. Thank you, man. Always puts a smile on my face. Sorry I'm late. You never have to be sorry. Happy 4th, Fox. Happy 4th to you, America. Not the American patriot right there, Snow Dub. Glad you stopped by. Ezekiel says, have you played the... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. The Game Boy uh, the Game Boy Advance Le Legacy of Goku 1 and 2 and Boo's Fury. I have. I even played that fighting game that... Uh, that uh, What was it called? There was a... It was kind of another weird name, but it was a two-dimensional a, a two fighting game. Uh, a 2D fighting game. Dragon Ball Z. Might might have been just Dragon Ball. Might have had... I think, well, no, I think it was Dragon Ball Z characters. But, uh, yeah, I have played that and it uh, wasn't bad. Wasn't bad. I like the Legend of Zelda kind of feel of Legacy of Goku. Uh, I think I just played the first one. I didn't play the second one. I really enjoy those. And, of course, the Budokai. Of course. Of course. That was one of those games I went to the – I remember going to the mall. I remember standing in line at – I don't know if it was a GameStop back then because this was a while ago. Budokai 1 for the PS2. Budokai 1. Man, what year? What freaking – what year was that? 99? I No. That might have been 97. No, 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 wait. Yes, it was 99 or it was 2000. One of the two. But yeah, I remember standing in line at insert game store here. Um, might have been EV Games. I don't know. It was in a mall uh, waiting to get a copy of that game. One of the first people in, I had to drive, I was in Texas at the time, I had to drive to Louisiana to get it. So I was in a Louisiana mall. Uh, Standing in line, waiting to get a copy of that game. Loved it. Uh, loved it. Um, it. It ended at the end of the Cell Saga. I was like, man, that kind of sucks. But then, you know, Budokai 2 came out, changed things up, knocked out the part. Budokai 3 was amazing. Really, really good. I got the HD remix. I don't know if you got those, uh, Ezekiel. The, uh, the HD remix or the HD version of that on PS3. It only included Budokai 1 and 3 weird that two was an omission i don't know i kind of like the board game aspect of of two that was pretty fun that was pretty fun uh tony see i'm keeping my mod at final fight there you go and putting in a lit marquee and arcade mod up 19 inch monitor my boy i did a video on that i did a video on it and it worked out nice i put one in my uh the first gen street fighter cap and i gotta tell you man a lot of people kind of knocking uh, arcade mod up, and I'm sure they have their legitimate reasons. But my experience was awesome. I loved it. It dropped right in. 19 versus I know it's not 20, but 19 inch monitor versus 17 inch. 
and it's it was nice especially mine i bought mine used i bought my my street fighter cab used so it has some scratches in the plexi you know it happens it's like, i'm not knocking anybody that the guy that i owned it before for the most part it was in good shape but it has some scratches and scuffs and i wanted to change that out anyway and uh for the money i was like what the hell let's just get that and it worked out nice worked out nice you're gonna enjoy that 19 inch monitor you are gonna enjoy it absolutely absolutely uh, i love cave vert oh yeah Oh yeah. Vertical games. Vertical shooters are awesome. Just crazy. It's just the amount of like sensory overload, all the bullets and, and missiles coming at you and you got to dodge it all and then fire yours. It's just, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. Hey, big Jim Cruz. Thank It was my pleasure to serve. Thank you, sir. My pleasure to serve. Uh, I would go with Galaga, Gunsmoke, Rescue, and uh, Air Gallet. Air Gallet? Air, Air Gallet? Gallet? Air Gallet. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I apologize. I apologize. Uh, your average gamer think Big Blue Four Ninety Nine version coming to Walmart, no store, etc. Yes, 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 absolutely. If all they got to do to sell more cabs is, is not include something, they'll do it. They'll they'll have a version that just won't have. They'll probably not have. Let's assume that my math is correct, and every version coming out is going to have a lit deck protector. Uh, they'll have a Standard deck protector, no stool, four ninety nine. It'll be a hundred dollars cheaper, absolutely. Um, it'll be later than everything else. You're gonna have to wait. Uh, maybe will it be this year? Christmas time, maybe. Walmart. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Don't. Uh, don't count on it for this year. CES time next year, first part of 2022, 20, uh, you might see some of those prices come down. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I think that 499 versions will probably not come out this year. You may have sales on the versions out now, $50 off maybe. But I don't know that Walmart's going to get their own hundred dollar lesser version uh, by this year. But like I said, I could be wrong. But I don't. I kind of lean. I kind of lean no. I think RK One Up is really trying to get the most for their dollar. And if that means they don't sell to Walmart this year, they're probably thinking if we can get through this holiday season, season, and 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 charge premium prices for everything we own, we can make up some of the losses. Because you know they're paying. I, listen, I don't know if you've heard this. I know other people have said it. I think uh, unqualified critic has said it. But I, I talked to some people within our company that do purchasing, our purchasing agents and all that. And and it's no, it's no, it's it's this is no crap. Seriously, uh, containers from Japan, from from China, from overseas. You were paying five thousand dollars one way. You're paying over twenty thousand dollars now. I'm serious. It's 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 no joke. Four, three to four times. Uh, I've heard I've heard as high as they used to pay seven thousand, right, for the expensive side. Twenty thousand plus is what you're paying now. I mean, you've tripled your your import pricing. Now that's per container, but you if you're talking about big items like arcade one up, you know, I mean, if you're talking about small items like you know, computer mice. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna be able to divide that up. Wow, my screen is going nuts. No, I don't want to know the weather. Thanks. <laughs> um, if you're talking about small products, you can chop up that extra money, and and you won't see your prices increase that much. When you're talking about a four foot package from Arcade One Up, uh, you know they're gonna you're gonna have to eat a lot of that, and you're gonna have to it's gonna be a bigger chunk per unit. That's gonna have to be passed along to the to the customer. Now, I think they were locked in with their older stuff. They had to keep they had to keep that stuff at the same price. That's probably why we're seeing these increases on these uh, the prices on these new machines. That's you know some of it obviously, but uh, but that cost is real. Now they're probably trying to get as much as they can through this holiday season to recoup that, and then once they recoup that, we'll see some normalization. We will. We'll see some of that sort of calm down, but. You know, until that, until until we have these shortages sort of satisfied, if we have these shipping rates come back down to normal, get away from the twenty thousand, you know, and get it down to about the, the seven, eight, even ten thousand dollar range, 
uh, you can see your prices sort of sort of get back to normal and and uh, without all this fluctuation. But, you know, they've got to recoup those costs somehow. And unfortunately, you and I are going to have to pay that. So uh, so discount models. They'll, they'll take the hit. They'll not sell to Walmart this holiday season. Watch. They won't sell to, to Walmart this holiday season because they've got enough of their of their product in Walmarts already where they think they're going to be okay. It's going to be next year. They're going to try to get into Walmarts. Walmart's going to say, we're not going to sell your stuff for that price. They're going to say, okay, we made it to the holiday season. Here's a $4.99 version. You just won't get a stool. That's how these things work anyway, right? You don't get a, there's no sticker. And they say, oh, that's the, that's, that's the non-collector's edition, whatever. Uh, Spy Hunter is my favorite vertical game. And a driving game. Big Jim Cruise. So you're looking at the, you, that. There's your cab right there. Vertical driving games. There's a ton of them out there. Uh, I love Road Blasters. Love it. I have a soft spot that makes no sense for Final Fight. I can't sell it. It makes perfect sense to me. Final Fight's a fun game. There's some games that people just have to have. I mean, you know. Let me show you right now. I don't let's see how this is going to work. We're going to switch back to camera two for a second because uh, that's the way I roll. Let's see, I'm going to have to kind of see that corner. Uh, if you can tell, I've got a little bit of a soft spot for Alien versus Predator. Uh, you know, just saying. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to judge you because listen, if anybody. Anybody, if I arcade makes makes a, an Alien versus Predator, I'm buying it. I'm just gonna buy it. I don't care. As long as I can play that game on that on that arcade, I'm buying it. And the thing I'm building behind me is gonna be just awesome. I'm gonna love it. But it's the second Alien versus Predator build I've done because there's just something about that game I love. The fact that it was based on an original script from a 1990 uh, from 1993. Three. It was going to be an actual sequel to the first Predator before they came out with that, you know, other Danny Glover movie, which is fine, but it wasn't what I wanted, you know. Um, and combining that with Alien, it's going to be amazing. And it's Capcom, so big Capcom fan. Uh, Michael Brent, what's up? Ever watch uh, Captain Planet, Sailor Moon, Freakazoid, Yu Yu uh, Hakuso, Hakus Hakusho, uh, Cyborgs 2000 or 2009? Uh, so I have so I have watched Naruto. I have watched uh, Captain Planet. Obviously, I try to put that out of my mind as much as I can, but yeah, it is what it is. It was a very '90s thing. Sailor Moon, yes. Uh, Freakazoid, yes, and no to everything else. Freakazoid was kind of fun. Freakazoid was cool. Uh, I think the Big Blue is actually pretty cool, uh, but I'm still going to wait on it. And I think you should if you're not sold right. I mean, there's no reason to pay full price if you don't have to have it right now. If I didn't have a YouTube channel, would I buy it right away? Eh, probably not. I might have waited a little bit longer, but because I want to get a review to you, I want you to know everything about it. Uh, I want to share that information with you. I had to get one. Uh, I had to get it. And, you know, I don't have a stand-up uh, Capcom cab. I have Street Fighter II, uh, the first gen. But, you know, I, I, I'm not going to buy another Legacy cab because I bought, the, I bought the Midway version, and it's fine. But I just don't like the style. I don't like the design. I don't like the line of sight issue. It's still an issue for me. I'm going to take care of that. But it requires a lot of work for a $400 piece of equipment that I just bought. I shouldn't have to do that much to it just to be able to look at it and see it and play it and all that. Uh, it's kind of crazy. Hey, Chris Davis, AVP is dope. Yes, sir. That's a, that's a badass game, dude. I'm telling you, I love that game. Uh, Dragon Gamer. Uh, Disney owns it now, so they could, uh, they could do one. Absolutely, they could do one. They have done X-Men everything, and, uh, and Disney owns that license. They're going to do, well, I don't know. We think they're going to do Simpsons, right? We think, right? That's what we were told, right? If they do Simpsons like they say they're going to do, then you know that's also another Fox property that they own, so they could totally do it. I think Alien vs. Predator could be its own cab for sure. I think that would be the highlight you know, cab. They've done fight Capcom fighting games all day long. They've done the only one, the only non-fighting game that they, Capcom cab that they've done is Final Fight. 
really when you think about it. Everything else, the X-Men versus Street Fighter, the uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, the Marvel superheroes, those are all Capcom fighting games, and that's cool. But uh, you know, even even their 12 and ones, even the even the, uh, the 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 cocktail cabinet was Street Fighter 2 themed, and Street Fighter 2 was the main game in that 12 game lineup. Um, Big Blue is turning that corner, so now, you know, Alien vs. Predator is one. I'm telling you, there's a lot of of, of brand recognition there. There's a lot of enthusiasm for those two movie franchises. And remember, I mean, it's it's not not for nothing. Arnold Schwarzenegger's character was in that game. I don't know if everybody really realizes that, but that's Dutch right there. That's Dutch with a freaking robot arm. Come on. I mean, could you get Arnold Schwarzenegger back to voice it? No, because that wouldn't be arcade accurate. But it would be cool. What if he did some of the promos for it? I mean, I, you know, I, I think it, I, it's one of those games that, that it's got a good story. It's got great gameplay. Um, you're, it's not just a two button beat em up. It's three buttons, which I know is not that much more than two, but there are a lot of different moves you can do. There are a ton of different combinations with the three buttons. It is just a, if you've never played it, if you've got anything at home that can play it, if you like a Pandora's box or anything, uh, if you've got an opportunity to play it, it is, man, it is a ton of fun. And it goes all over the place. You know, you're fighting everything. It's not just aliens. It's all over the place. Uh, Kev Gret, uh, at your average, exactly. Uh, we have to cut orders to Walmart, Target, etc., because we don't have product to ship them. Oh, Kev Gret, uh, what, are you, what are you talking about there, buddy? Um, is this still going? Fireworks over? Uh, yeah, we're still going and the fireworks are, what time is it? I think they're still, I think they're still going. I think they're still going. There's a few, there's a few, uh, rebels out there still, uh, still, uh, launches the fireworks, but, uh, yeah. So thanks for buying the stuff. <laughs> so I do it so you don't have to, I do it so you can look at it and make a decision for yourself. Uh, good reviews always help the community. Yes, I agree. Uh, people get their hands on it and get a review together and let people make a good informed decision. And that's 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 what I that's what I enjoy doing. So, you know, and that way, if it's a buy, if I'm enjoying, it, if I'm loving it, I want everybody else to have that opportunity to know that it's good and go get it. If it sucks and you shouldn't buy it, I want to be able to communicate with uh, communicate that to you as well. Soggy Kiss says, "Fox, I got a single player pop." Pop a shot. That's pretty cool. Costs two hundred dollars and folds up the, uh, the to save room. You even you ever think about getting one uh, for your game room? Um, I don't know that I know what you're talking about. It's a single player pop a shot. That's pretty cool. Um, I don't know, but as I lay out my arcade game or my arcade room, the area that I'm going to have for my uh, allocated for my arcade, I'm going to take those suggestions because I don't I enjoy rk one-up and i love it but i don't want to have just a bunch of rk one-ups because there's not that much variety there there's only one driving game there's only one shooting game i want to have that's the point of the arcade is to, to you know to have a very specific gaming experience and you don't get that with a bunch of consoles which i love you know get me wrong but um yeah it's just not just not uh it's not what an arcade is about. So suggestions like that are something I want to check into. A very specific experience. Uh, Big Jim says he wants to grab the Star Wars cabinet and mod it. Good luck finding one. There's a there's a GameStop close to me that has one, and I've gone in there and asked the guy and tried to get talk it out, talk him out of it. It's on display. It's not in a box, and they won't sell it to me. I don't know why. Actually, uh, many thought after you fight the alien queen, AVP. Uh, falls off and would have been better if they kept you fighting different types of aliens. Uh, yes, but then you fight humans, and it, so it adds variety. Uh, you turn out that the big bad guy is not just the aliens. There's you know evil corporations or whatever. I mean, it's kind of the standard you know story layout. But it's but it's fun. It's fun. Um, yeah, I mean, no game is perfect, but I, I like. I personally love the the gameplay and the variety. Waiting for your power layout to the arcade video. <laughs> Power layout. Yes, it's gonna it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen for sure. I'm going to uh, 
I, I've got to do something about, and we all have this problem, doing power, getting it laid out for your arcade. Do you just plug in a bunch of power strips and call it good? You can do that. Is that ideal? No, but I want to incorporate something that's going to have power and raise everything up. So that, that idea is still taking shape. I'm starting to lay out some of the cabinets there to get a feel for the overall size and scope and spacing and all that. I've got these three behind me, two counter cades here, but over at the arcade, I currently have two full size set up. I have the cocktail. I've got two in boxes that's going to be built. I've got my original multi cave that I built. And then I've got the, I've also got the, um, the Street Fighter One that has my it's, it's it's still set up for the two racing, uh, which I think I'm going to turn that back into a Street Fighter because it's going to have that classic artwork that the Big Blue won't have, and uh, it it looks better, you know, as 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 a, a Street Fighter cab because that's sort of what it's set up for. So put the stock PCB back in and all that. So uh, I got to figure out how to hook that up with the new. Uh, 19 inch monitor, but I, I think I've got the board to do that. So should be fine. Should be good. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be fun. Nonetheless, I can't wait to start laying that out. I can't wait to share that with you because you're going to actually, gonna, you're actually going to help me figure all that out. What the hell? Yo, the sign is real simple, B. It says wrap it up. Unfortunately, it is time to wrap it up. We've gone a little over two hours tonight. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I love the conversation. It's always fun. Um, so yeah, so definitely, uh, if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Once we hit 1,700 subscribers, I'm gonna have a I'm gonna do a video, a video or a live stream. I'm not sure, but either way, it's gonna be it's gonna be titled 1,700 subs, whatever. So in that video, I'm gonna ask a question, and you're gonna answer that question in the comment section. So I guess it probably needs to be a regular video, right? Uh, it's not gonna be a trivia question. It's gonna be an opinion question. So it's going to be, what's your favorite color, red or blue? You'll pick one of the two. As long as you answer that question, and then as long as you are a subscriber, you're going to be entered to win. Uh, you're going to be entered to win uh, the Final Fight control panel, which I don't have with me right now. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's basically a brand new control panel for a first-gen um, Final Fight cab. It's all stock from RK1UP, and I'm going to include the ribbon cable and PCB with that. Uh, so that you can take that and you can do with it what you will, mod it, add it to an existing first-gen cab that you have, whatever. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're tuned to the channel for that video so you can comment on that and get entered to, uh, to win that. Once we get beyond 1,700, we're going to have another prize at 1,800. We're going to have another prize at 1,900. And then, of course, at the 2,000 subscriber mark, I'm giving away a free commission. So... Anyway, everybody be safe. And whoa, 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 I'm not going to step away and leave a super chat unanswered. Tony C for the cause. Thank you for the cause. Absolutely. Absolutely for the cause. And because you did that for me, I'm all I'm gonna do this. What do you get? What do you deserve? Oh, I gotta hit you with a little bit of full war. And here's to that Killer Instinct cab that they promised, but they better give us. Anyway, y'all have a blessed day. Enjoy the rest of your 4th of July weekend, and I will see you next time.